contest is scheduled for one fall. Making their way to the ring. Live from the AfterBuzz TV studios, it's Making Their Way to the Ring with Lillian Garcia. Applause <laughs> all the way around. And welcome everybody to Making Their Way to the Ring. Ha <laughs> it's an exciting day. We have a lot of news, a lot of news. I am Lillian Garcia. You can catch me at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Twitter, and you can also catch me on my Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook. Uh, LillianGarcia.com has everything as far as all the podcasts too from AfterBuzz TV. And with me, we have the former senior producer of TMZ. He is now the editor in chief of Pro Wrestling Sheet.com, Ryan Satin. Thank you, thank you. And you guys can follow me at Ryan Satin on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And you can follow up my website at Wrestling Sheet on all of those as well. And like you said, it's been a Busy week. Busy. <laughs> like, I had so much Busy. stuff going on. I, you've had so much stuff going on. So yes. Many cool interviews that you've done. We got AJ Styles on the show uh, today. How cool is that? Phenomenal. AJ Styles. Oh my gosh. I mean, WWE has been so awesome allowing me to interview the current roster. You know, we, we do it all here, but they've been really cool. And uh, and then getting to, you know, I saw AJ backstage. We were trying to get him backstage at, uh, at Staples Center. Mm -hmm. And um, crazy day, though. I mean, it's just short day. Yes. You know, short days in the, in the West Coast because the show goes on so early uh, for the West Coast. I didn't here. even think about it's that. When you guys are on the West Coast, it's much more difficult and much more, yeah, less time. I never starts, thought about that. It starts at 4. And but then you know Raw starts at five, and so there's so many, and they're you know getting to the ring. I mean getting to the arena around twelve or so. So the day is like four hours yeah. versus getting there at twelve and then it doesn't go until eight, right? So there's so much going on. And AJ, hmm, a little busy these days. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I never thought about that. So when you guys are on the West Coast. They don't have to get there earlier. They well, still get they there. Well, the okay. they do. They still just two hours early. But think and then two o'clock on East Coast. Okay. 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 But you think about it, um, it's still a longer, I don't know, there's still... No, no, it makes sense what you're saying. I'm just trying yeah. to think if they have to, like, get the, they're not getting there at 9 a.m., they're getting there at 12. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. 12 o'clock, which, still you know, by the time. time you eat and all of that, you're really not getting anything going to around 2, and then, oh, my gosh, in two hours starts the show. And then fitting in an hour interview show. makes it a little more difficult. Right, well, <laughs> and he's got a lot going on because he's got the match that he's, you know, dealing with. He's got media that he's dealing with backstage. He's got promos that he's trying to learn and at, at, at the same time, you know, go over everything. So what we decided to do, he, he was so awesome, though, because he came up to me and he goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry I didn't get to your interview. He goes, but I want to do it. I want to do it. So set me up. You know, well, let's do it via Skype. And I'm like, perfect. Yeah. So that's what we did. Great. Oh, man. Yes. I can't wait to see so, that. So uh, it was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just going to throw that out there. It was phenomenal. He shared so much about his life, things that I did not know about him. Uh, he's got four kids that he's raising at the same time as being here. He talked about a lot about the abuse that he went through with his dad. Oh, interesting. Which was um, really tough. My gosh, I mean, really, if you think of some of the times, you know, when you, you grow up this, this way, but like he said, hey, who hasn't had stuff and whatever, like, but his faith is huge. And we spoke about that, about, you know, being in the wrestling world and faith is not really talked about in no. the wrestling world, right? Um, but like he's, he mentioned, he says it's, it's kind of one of those things that you don't really talk about it a lot anywhere anymore. Um, so we spoke about that. His little girl came into the interview. Aww. She was adorable. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, so it was really great and we are definitely going to bring that up to you guys um, in a few minutes but we've got just a, a couple things to go through um, first of all Wrestlemania oh my god coming Close. up in just a few weeks few weeks it's crazy fast lane's over we're almost yeah, there so at Wrestlemania I'm going to be busy <laughs> Um, which I'm really excited about because that's the way I like to do it. I don't have my exact schedule yet. I'm being invited by WWE to go there. And um, I do know that I am going to do access oh, cool. for WrestleMania, so that's cool. Um, I am going to be at the Hall of Fame. I'm going to obviously be at Mania and then be at the Raw afterwards. And I'm also going to do WrestleCon oh, on awesome. Saturday. That one I do know that is Saturday during the day. Really excited about that. I'm sure I'm going to see so many people that I used to work with. Have you ever done a WrestleCon before? No. This is your first, first time doing time. one? Honestly, WrestleCon is one of my favorite things of WrestleMania really? weekend. I love I I didn't get to go last year, but I went the year before. Yeah. And like you said, because you work with so many of those people that are going to be there, it's like this fun reunion that 
I prefer it over access just because it's like these little. Don't sp- say that oh, no, no, no. too loud. No, 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 I love access. No, don't get me wrong. Access yeah. is super cool. It has all those signs with actual superstars and yeah. all the cool things that you can do there. I don't dislike access, but but it's cool for WrestleCon because they're all so close. You know, it's like these little ah. tables where everyone's in a row. So you'll see like in a row, it'll be like Scott Steiner, The Godfather, uh, you know, yeah. Mick Foley, and they're all like in a row of people. And right. it's, it's I love it personally. They're bringing a lot of people there for the first time. There's a lot of first timers. Oh, awesome! Us. Yeah, and um, and WWE has been very supportive of them, which is really great too. That's so, really cool. And I hear that the venue is going to be it, it's really close to where we're at. Oh, is and it? Stuff. Yeah. Good. So I hear it's going to be great. Because that's definitely I'm key excited. when you when you have to do both of how yeah. close it is. I'm excited just to get back and meeting with the fans. I, you're gonna love that. There's literally gonna be a, a huge line of fans that yeah. are waiting to see you. I mean, I I know I have a friend that that one year that I would dress on where he spent like fifteen hundred dollars in photos and stuff wow. because he just wanted to. See all his favorite wrestlers. Yeah. So you're gonna have a lot of people coming to say. Well, hey. I haven't done a signing since I left. Oh, so you're this gonna love this. This is my first one. You know, like I said, so Access I think will be first. Um, I believe I'm doing Access on Thursday. I'll find out more, but um, and then this one on Saturday. But it, it'll be really nice. That's awesome. You know, to, to get together with everybody. And yeah. it'll be cool to hear feedback so, on the show from fans and stuff too. Yeah. I'm sure you get to hear face to face since you put so much work into this. It'll be cool it, for you to hear how they th- what they think about it. Yeah, I mean the response has been outrageous already. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Um, and then. Then we have, okay, so this Sunday I'm actually leaving and I'm going to Spain. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm so have you been excited. There before? I grew up there. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So my dad worked for the American Embassy for eight years, which is why I grew up there. And I didn't come to the States until I was eight years old. Yeah. I came to South Carolina. So I kind of have two home bases, yeah. you know? But um, I mean, definitely Spain feels like home home. Um, obviously, it's my first, you know, place. I learned Spanish before I learned English. I learned English when I was five, <laughs> yeah. which is why I also don't have an accent because yeah. when you learn at such a young age. Um, went to American school, the military there in Spain. Um, and then I, I'll never forget when I was coming here uh, to the States, I was so excited. Oh my God, I was so excited. Now, I don't know why, but they had brochures of the Statue of Liberty, and she was white. Yes. Oh, interesting. Interesting. That is interesting. So I get to New York City, my first stop from coming from Spain, and the Statue of Liberty is green. <laughs> And I was like, what is going on? Mommy, why is she so dirty? (laughs) Literally, I couldn't understand why is the Statue of Liberty green? And in the brochure, she's white. I still don't understand why they had a Statue of Liberty white. But anyway, so that was my first impression of America, was that there was a dirty Statue of Liberty. (laughs) Oh, it was crazy. When's the last time you've been back, though? Um... So I've been back since then with yeah, WWE hope, yeah. several times. I took my husband, um, my my parents and I, we went. Uh, so, But, you know, we've been through a heck of a year. So we've decided, my sister, my cousin, um, and I have decided to take my mom. She really wanted to go. And we're going to take some of Dad's ashes, actually. Oh, and awesome. we're going to spread them there, which was is going to be very special. That's great. Um, because working through the American Embassy with there was very, very dear to him and so we thought that that would be very fitting that's interesting so, that's awesome that's really cool I yeah. when I went to Spain I <laughs> I went to Spain a few years ago and I was all excited about it it, it was part of a cruise where we were going to different places and we had a, Spain was one of the stops and I remember when I got there I, was, I called my grandpa and I was like oh it's really cool and he was like yeah he's like you know you're Spanish right and I was like no <laughs> you, yeah, I was like, you, you've never <laughs> mentioned this my entire life I was like I'm you're Puerto Rican I thought and he was like well, yeah, but my dad grew up in Spain. Same, like, right. my mom is Puerto Rican. Like, yeah. I, you know, like, you have Spanish blood. I was like, what? You've never told me that in my life. Like, I didn't know that I was going there when I got here. So yeah. I enjoy, I love Spain. When I was there, yeah. I had the best time. I love it. Yeah, it, it, well, that's, you know, everybody was really much in Spain and then went to, to, to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Where, so my grandmother, same thing, grew up in, in Madrid. So, uh, yeah, so it's going to be exciting. But what I wanted to do is I didn't want to leave you guys without a show. So um, it was crazy. I took advantage of WWE inviting me, and I got, here we go, boom, 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 the next two weeks. First, next week, we will have the one and the only, the boss, Sasha Banks. Yeah. Oh, I'm 
I'm so excited yes. about that. That's awesome. Wait till you hear what she shared with me. And she also broke news. Oh. Yeah. It was funny. I kind of mentioned something, and she was like, oh, no, we don't talk about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm just going to let it happen. And it was great. Oh, awesome. It was great. So we have breaking news. Um, we were actually backstage at Staples Center for that one, and they did not allow cameras. Okay. So it is just an audio only. Okay. But you guys know what she looks like. So. Yeah. <laughs> We will see what she it looks like. Matter. And, and if you're listening to us on time. iTunes, it doesn't even matter anymore. <laughs> you know, whatever. But anyway, so that will be next on Monday. And then the Monday after that, I've got... I'm ready. The Last Kicker, oh, Becky Lynch. That's so yeah, cool. I know, right? Oh, man. So you got Bailey, Sasha, and Becky on yes. the show now? Oh, that's so now cool. Now I just got to get Charlotte on here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very, very exciting. Um, I mean, and, and then I know that the day that I come back on the 26th, and the 27th, we're going to go ahead and do, like, our pre-show. Yep. Yeah, with Christy and yourself and the three of us, we're going to do a pre-show. Let's see if we can get maybe somebody else to come in for that. And, we'll work um, on it. Yeah, and awesome. have a little powwow. Um, Pull up a roll deck, see yeah, what I can help let's, out with. Let's, let's see what we can do and have a pre-show for Mania. Um, yeah, so we got a lot of exciting things, like I said. So what? let's go ahead... Because we have so much news. There's a lot going There's on. There's a lot going on. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead. Right after this, we're going to be bringing Christy Olsen in with all the wrestling news. What's up, party people? Roxy Stryer here from The Tomorrow Show with Kevin Undergaro. We're your twice-weekly broadcast of one man's midlife crisis and the mad millennials in Star Trek uniforms that follow him. And I'm one of those millennials, Lauren Legrasso here. We've had some amazing guests like Russell Simmons, Ileana Douglas, and Craig Gass. Coolio, right? Christian Blatt in the house to tell you to go to thetomorrowshow.com to check us out. We're live every Monday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern. That's thetomorrowshow.com. Be there, be square, whatever that means. Welcome back. It's now time for your Making Their Way to the Ring news. We've been reporting on all this year's WWE Hall of Fame inductees, and we finally know who our female Hall of Famer is going to be. Yay, the Glamazon Beth Phoenix. Yeah. Will be inducted in Orlando on March 31st. She says she wasn't expecting to get this opportunity so early as she just retired in 2012, but she's known about this since January oh, when what? Mark Carano gave her a call. That's right, and she says the first thing she did was walk to the next room and tell her husband, Edge, who himself was inducted in 2012, this will make them the only two spouses ever <sighs> to be WWE Hall of Famers. So congratulations wow, to cool. Beth. Yes, that and is so breaking cool. just in the last about 12 minutes. Dun, dun, dun. Right? Rick Rude is also going to be inducted this year. The co-founder of D-Generation X will be inducted by <laughs> Ricky Steamboat. Wow. Very appropriate. So congratulations to him and to Beth Phoenix. Congratulations. And we also kind of know already who's going to induct Beth Phoenix as well. It hasn't been fully announced. Let me think. Not confirmed. Well, Can you guess, Lillian? You wanna, yeah, you want to guess? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was actually Maria Menounos who broke the story on this one. Uh, Maria, Kelly Kelly was on Maria's show, I think, uh, two weeks ago, I want to say. Okay. And without saying who it was, because they didn't want to spoil who was going into the Hall of Fame, uh, Maria said that she had been working with Beth for the past few months to figure out what her style was going to be for the event. She just said, with the female who's going in this year. And so she said she worked with her to get her style down. And Kelly Kelly said that that's why she's going to be at the Hall of Fame, is to in base. They didn't say Beth Phoenix by name at the time because it hadn't been announced, but yeah. they said that she's going to be there to induct the person so that's Kelly going Kelly. in. Kelly Close to being confirmed it's as possible, but not confirmed. Correct. Wait, okay, I'm so confused. <laughs> Kelly Kelly. Just so Kelly Kelly, it looks like she's going to induct Beth Phoenix. Yes. But we don't know that for sure. Well, it's only because it, it, when this interview took place, it was before they announced Beth Phoenix. Yeah. And so she was like, are you going to be at the Hall of Fame? And she was like, yeah, I'm going to be there to induct someone. And she was like, oh, And she was I like, but now. I can't okay. really say who it is yet. And Marie was like, well, I already know because I'm doing her style. <laughs> and like, they all like, uh -huh. kind of like, got all giddy uh -huh. about it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. All right. Maria's got the scoop. I love it. So congratulations, uh, both of them. I love Beth. I mean, I really, I had so much fun working with her. And the thing about Beth is that she cared so much about every single match and working with her opponent. That was a, the thing with her is that she really would talk to them and, and, and really strategize how to put the best match together. And um, when she got hurt, I remember she got hurt not long after debuting. Am I right? I think I'm right. I, it sounds I'm almost right. right. I know. I'm trying to remember. I trust you more than me on this she, one. She really got hurt one time. And uh, she was so upset because she 
well, she loves this business and wanted to be in it so much, and then all of a sudden she sidelined. But when she came back, and I always say that uh, so many times when somebody gets hurt, they have an opportunity to come back even bigger and better. And most of the time, that's what happens. So, anyway, are, are you well, are you surprised though? Uh, I mean, you worked with her. Uh, yeah. Are you surprised that she went in so soon after retiring? I mean, she's gone in for a lot of women that were there. Yeah. In, you know, the eighties, nineties. Every, like every that. year, people can give their opinions and speculate as to who they thought it should be or who it's going to be. Of course. There's always yeah. going to be. That. Well, I didn't say speculate. So I, I'm more just wondering if you were surprised that she went no, in so quick. No, I. You know what? I, when I saw the whole package of her when they revealed all that, I was like, man. She really did do a lot, and she was just, she was not, she's like the superstars now, like the, the Charlotte and, and all of that, like, she was just tough, and uh, I, I don't think it's surprising at all for me. No, I was just wondering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, Lillian. Fine. Yes? I do have a surprise for you. Oh, boy. Dun, dun, dun. Your friend Lita <gasps> returned to in-ring yeah! action this weekend. Yes. yes at an independent show in Joppa, Maryland. Wow. She was only auto or advertised to do an autograph signing, and then it was announced that she would be competing in an eight-person tag team match, which led fans to wonder, would she really be getting in on the action? She did. She wrestled and took some bumps and performed her signature snap DDT and a twist of fate. Wow. Yes, fans watched Lita perform a twist of fate just this weekend, 2017, oh after God. she retired at Survivor Series in 06. So this is big news. Big freaking news. <laughs> and I'm so excited. We've actually been back and forth. She wants to do the show. So excited that she's going to do the show. Uh, we've been trying to figure out exactly like time wise and because I'm going to Spain and I had Sasha and Becky and all them that are coming up and AJ, we've decided that Lita is going to be on the show in April. So we will let you know exactly when, but uh, I can't wait to speak to her further about this. And I think it's awesome. She still has it. She still got it. And, and you'll be able to find out if she's going to continue maybe yeah. wrestling again. I mean, yeah. I, if Who you knows done, what she does from here to yeah, cause Mania, it, but. Yeah, because you, uh, you know, if you had done it before, you might not have been able to ask that kind of I question. Know. <laughs> I, I know. I it know. It's crazy how timing is. So, uh, yeah, and I, actually, I was going to tape the interview like a few weeks ago and then air it, you know, later. And then I got bronchitis. So, um, <laughs> I'm on and the good outside. thing you did. <laughs> so anyways, but I'm glad it all worked out because right? now, yeah, I can do it in uh, in April. It'll be nice and fresh, and we'll get the scoop. And you're feeling better, which we're all glad to hear. Yeah. Still lingering a little, but <laughs> get well, out of me. Get out of me. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> Lita's not the only one, you guys, who had a busy weekend. Miss Dana Brooke competed in the Arnold Classic on Friday in Columbus, Ohio. She's from Ohio. And this is not her first time competing, but this does make her the first WWE superstar ever to compete in the Arnold Classic. She was in the fitness category and did this great routine, kind of a, a dance pose is what my amateur eye would call all of this. A lot of fun. She performed with one of those stuffed stiletto heels, which she used to flip around and on top of, kind of an old school thing that she did. It was awesome. She placed 14th in the fitness category and last, I'm sure is very, very, very proud of herself because listen, she's not got the time like the rest of these ladies to devote to this. She's a WWE superstar and a competitor. So you, congratulations to Dana Brooke and you can take a look here at her routine. I love the, that she did this. I really do. Um, I think that uh, it, you guys, I mean, Mark, I just want to make sure you did roll the tape already, right? We did get to see Dana. Yeah, yeah everybody got a chance to see it. Awesome. Well, he's in the booth, by the way. He's our little um, hey, voice from above that comes. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I love that she did this because it obviously is something that she's still passionate about. And I love that WWE allowed her to do this. I think it's great when you get to expand and do some other things outside of wrestling. Uh, and I thought, she, hey, come on, I know she plays 14th, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. She still went out there. She still did it. And that's the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, I never could have done any of those things. I right? was, I, oh, yeah. She was, I'd I, like to see you jack. I, I was so impressed while watching that. I, I would have never guessed that she would have gotten last place. But I did watch uh, the girl who got in first place just because I was wondering. Yeah. And it was so impressive. Uh, she had this, like, giant hula hoop thing. And she was, like, throwing it across the stage so that it would be spinning around. And then she would, like flip into it and like be spinning around in the hula hoop wow. and then flip out of it. It was super cool. So I, 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 she had some tough competition. I also think it was cool that she had to hang out with Arnold, Dana Brooke. There, she posted a picture of the two of them hanging out and she, she got to pick his brain a little bit and that he was inspired by her doing both. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It just It's great that she did it.
Yes. So congrats, Dana. Congrats to her. And, well, she had a great Friday, maybe not such a great Sunday, at WWE Fastlane, <laughs> where Dana came out with Charlotte Flair, as she usually does, and Charlotte immediately sent her packing said, get off my stage. <laughs> you will never guess what happened after that. Everyone, Charlotte's 16 pay-per-view winning Ooh. streak is Duh. over. Duh. Done, Duh. demolished by Miss Bailey last night at Fast Lane. Charlotte was fired up. She was trash talking the whole time. She clearly thought that she was going to make this her 17th win, but Bailey pulled it out with a little bit of help from Sasha Banks, to be honest with you. Uh, it ended with a Bailey to Belly, and then Bailey pinned Charlotte to her dismay. She was shocked. Everyone else is, but she will remain the superstar with the longest pay per view winning streak. She's not the only one who got defeated last night either. Braun Strowman also suffered his first defeat ever in WWE against <sighs> Roman Reigns, and Kevin Owens lost the Universal title. Yeah. Goldberg will be taking. <laughs> It to WrestleMania. 20 so. seconds. <laughs> How did he lose in 20 seconds? <laughs> 22, to be fair. Okay, 22 seconds. And at least he like he like he spanned it out and and did the whole walk around the ring multiple times to try and make it look yeah. like it was longer. Yeah. At yeah. least, it was but, very entertaining. Yeah. In that yeah. Wow, what a review. Yeah, look, I get why they made all those decisions creatively, but as a fan watching it, it was just it was tough. You know, I mean, <laughs> to see all those things happen at once, and and you know, Chris didn't mentioned the person who beat uh, Braun Strowman was Roman Reigns, which everyone yeah. has. Everyone hate, loves booing on Roman. You know, well, I think on maybe Roman that's Reigns. another reason to. You know what though? It kind of makes Braun even a bigger baby face. Think about it. All right, so maybe and it leads to something from here. Um, I, I like knows? your positivity. <laughs> yes, positivity. I <laughs> hey, I will say though, uh, isn't it ironic the number of pay-per-views that Charlotte won? 16? Does that oh. number? Oh. Ah, I wonder if that's why they did that. That's yeah, actually think a good about point. It. Ric Flair, 16 time, or uh, WWE, or uh, I should say World Champ, whatever, all yeah. those titles put together. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think maybe it has to do with something like that. I think you might be onto something there, maybe. Lillian. That's pretty good. I, never, <laughs> I didn't think about that just in the slightest. <laughs> that you know, was pretty sometimes good. Sometimes the blonde doesn't seep in that, <laughs> that heavy in there. Uh, but, the, man, I, I will say, as much as I'm bummed about Kevin Owens losing the title in 20 seconds. 22. 22. <laughs> it is cool to see Goldberg as champion again. I mean, I, yeah. I saw a stat on ESPN this morning where it said that he's uh, the longest in bet it's the longest amount of time in between world title reigns that anyone's ever had. It was like over 5,000 days or something like that. 14 years. 14 years. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it was 14 years. 14 years ago, I remember after an after show, it was Goldberg and Stone Cold Steve Austin in myself, and we were all drinking beer in the <laughs> ring, like I usually did with uh, the badass Cold Stone Cold. Oh, Wills. It was so fun. <laughs> it was so fun. Um, but yeah, I remember that, and I'm thinking, God, that was what 14 years ago. Where's time gone by? But anyway, so congratulations to Goldberg. I couldn't even drink 14 years ago. So, so now right? this is going to be like, yo, know, shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so this is actually uh, going to be interesting because Goldberg's now going to go into WrestleMania as champ, and now it's going to be a championship match, right, with Brock Lesnar? That's, That's what right. I would imagine. That's, yeah, yes. I, I mean, it has so. to be at this point. They already announced that match, so yeah. 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 Well, WrestleMania, I, well, that, that's going to be interesting. You know, I know that I, I feel like because we've all wanted an actual match at a Goldberg and we've only gotten these 20-second things, I'm hoping, hoping that at WrestleMania we at least finally get a full match at Goldberg. I you think will. that that's what the point it's of all totally these 20 second happening. things have been to where when Brock takes him to the limit, it's going to be this impressive yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I feel. I can't wait. Yeah. Yes, so Bill Goldberg is in the driver's seat on the road to WrestleMania. But what about pro wrestling's hottest free agents? Well, Matt and Jeff Hardy became just that when they left TNA, now called Impact Wrestling. They have confirmed that and tweeted it. Rebby uh, gave an interview, his wife, when she cited some contract negotiations breaking down is the reason for them leaving. However, there is some controversy over where they're going next. And I read a report on Pro Wrestling Sheet this morning. <laughs> Maybe I if the who, uh, editor in chief up. could weigh in. Maybe <laughs> if we if we could just get him in here. <laughs> um, get that guy on the phone. Guys, Ryan Sadden, <laughs> where do you say the Hardy Boys are going next? All right. Well, what I can say is that they are deep in talks with WWE at this point. Now I know oh. over the weekend. Yes, this is exciting news. But but you know. I know that they're trying to 
swerve people a little bit here because over the weekend they appeared in Ring of Honor and they won the Ring of Honor tag titles and they said that we've signed a deal they, they in Broken Matt Hardy speak said they had signed a deal with Ring of Honor and that they'd be wrestling at the next couple shows but the shows that they announced were all the shows that are before Wrestlemania not, and after Wrestlemania they didn't say anything that takes place after WrestleMania, so what I'm told mm -hmm. is that it is a short-term thing. That they they had already been planning to work with Ring of Honor leading up to WrestleMania weekend because they had that uh, I believe it's a Super Card of Honor show that they're working on. So I wouldn't take that whole signing thing too seriously because what I'm told, uh, the talks with WWE are deep. They're 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 very much <laughs> in deep 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 talks. I'm sitting here <laughs> praying because that would be amazing. <laughs> I do that would wonder be though. So great. You know we because. We had been, we were talking before Lillian, and yeah. last week on my site, I mean, we broke a ton of stories on things going on with Impact Wrestling, because there's lot. all these changes a going lot. on. Yeah, like they got, you know, Drew Galloway and the Hardy Boys gone, Maria and Mike Bennett gone, <laughs> Jade's gone, and they, you know, they brought in... Did they say why? Uh, well, with, I know with the Hardy Boys, uh, they really just felt dissed, you know, from what I'm told, it was basically like they didn't really value Matt as much as they value Jeff, which is crazy because right now, Matt is one of the hottest acts yeah. in wrestling with that broken Matt character. Yeah. And so, during negotiations, they were kind of lagging, like Matt had to keep calling them and saying, hey, where's the contract? Where's the contract? Where's the contract? Mm. And finally... It just kind of broke down when the lawyer for the Hardy Boys told them, told the people for Impact Wrestling that they wanted creative control, and Impact was like, absolutely not, you're not gonna get creative control in any way, shape, or form, and they were like, well, just so you know, there is interest from other companies, and TNA, the president of TNA told them, well, go call WWE then if you think there's an offer. Well, that's, that's what do you want us to say? And so that's wow. exactly what they did. Wow. Yeah. You're regretting that. Yeah, wow. I'm sure they and are. some of the other, like, why Drew? Well, Drew, uh, from what I'm told in that situation, um, they just, it's another thing where they lagged on bringing the contract to him. And I believe, like, his contract was supposed to expire in a few days. And they finally presented him with a contract with a few days to go. And he was just like, you know what? I'm married. I got a family. I have to think about me. I'm a hot free agent right now. If you guys didn't value me, I'm just gonna go see what I can do on my own. If, if clearly wow. I wasn't enough a priority to you yeah. guys to, to come forward now. And then they brought in Alberto Del Rio instead, yes. which is crazy to me. Wow, uh, and became I, champ right, right yeah, off the bat. Night, night one now, they, he ended up, he got it in uh, peculiar circumstances and, and later in the taping, spoiler alert, he, he lost it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's pretty interesting that they, didn't value Broken Matt, who basically mm -hmm. brought them, kept them relevant for the past six months, and then brought in Alberto Rio, who has kind of been pretty problematic for the past six months. Like, he got arrested, he fought a Ninja Turtle, he got <laughs> stabbed outside of a restaurant. I mean, there's been all these crazy things surrounding him, so... And wasn't there a particular somebody backstage? Yes, Paige was backstage at I don't the know, show. How, how does that work? She works at WWE still. I mean, you know these waters, you, you know how to navigate these waters more Million. than me, Haven't but... you tried to tell Paige what to do before? But you would never, I, I take it in your I'm time at WWE. For that girl. Well, I take it your time at WWE, you never would have gone to no. a TNA show no. backstage. No, no. Right? It's just one of the, no. But, I mean, I don't know, Paige is Paige, you but know what I mean? She's just... But WWE's doing, filming her movie, they're, yeah. they're, they're doing all these things for her. You yeah. would think that she wouldn't be, it kind of feels like a slap in the face. She's in love, people. <laughs> <laughs> love will make you do She's crazy things. She's in love. <laughs> love will make you blind. But I, I do hope that we get this, that I think, and this is just my opinion on this one, I feel like we're gonna see the Hardy Boys back in TNA yeah. very soon. All right. I, that, that's my, that's my I, guess. That you mean WWE? That's what I said, yeah, WWE. No, you said back at TNA. Oh, I'm sorry. Back <laughs> TNA WWE. don't even exist no, anymore. No, not in TNA, sorry. Back in WWE very soon, I think. Yes. That's my guess. And like I said, there's been a lot of wrestling news and there's gonna be more news, TNA, between TNA and WWE. I think it's just exciting yeah. that oh, this is all happening. There's a lot happening yeah, right now. I mean, I the whole, it's great. The whole TNA thing, in, or, sorry, Impact Wrestling thing in general, I mean, it's interesting to me because they also brought back, you know, guys like Matt Morgan, Chris Masters, yeah. Bruce I Pritchard, yeah. uh, all this stuff. So it's interesting to see what they have going on right. over there. Right, and Jeff Jarrett's full-time. Oh, yeah. Full-time now there. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
and we will keep you posted on all of this breaking wrestling news as we're on the road to WrestleMania. I'm Christy Olson, the managing editor and chief correspondent of AfterBuzz TV's Pro Wrestling News Division and co-host of X Pac 12360 right here on AfterBuzz TV. This has been your Making Their Way to the Ring news. Thank you so much, yeah, Lillian. Thank you, Christy. It was great scoop. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much. Glad to be uh, here. Been, I can't wait to see fun. what AJ said. Oh my God, here we go. Because AJ Styles, the phenomenal AJ Styles, wonder though, when we'll find out maybe tomorrow, I don't know, on SmackDown, what he will do? he be headlining WrestleMania? I, will he be headlining? I want to know. I want to know. I hope he will. I think that would be an incredible, uh, you know, to see him up there from from last year, just two months in, having that WrestleMania moment, and uh, and then all of a sudden to headline WrestleMania. Well, well if he gets um, if he gets I'm the asking, spot, first thing I'm asking him. <laughs> well, if he gets the spot, I'm just hoping Randy Orton doesn't try to burn his house down or yeah. something right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, here you go. Thank you so much for the two of you for joining us, and we are now going into. AJ Styles' career. Here you go. WWE superstar AJ Styles was born on a Marine Corps base in North Carolina and grew up in Gainesville, Georgia. Raised modestly in a religious family that didn't own a TV, he never watched professional wrestling as a kid. AJ began training to wrestle as a teenager simply because his friends were doing it. In 1998, his confidence and aptitude for high-flying maneuvers led to a quick debut at National Championship Wrestling. AJ was successful on the independent circuit and began working for Ring of Honor and Total Nonstop Action Wrestling in 2002. Often referred to as Mr. TNA, AJ Styles won 19 championships there and was the first wrestler ever to score the TNA Triple Crown. He continued to perform around the world and also had two runs with New Japan Pro Wrestling, a member of the fan favorite Bullet Club alongside Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, AJ would win the IWGP heavyweight title twice. AJ made his long-awaited arrival in WWE at the Royal Rumble in January of 2016. He appeared at WrestleMania two months later and would go on to engage in a memorable feud with John Cena. Their SummerSlam 2016 bout was named Match of the Year by Pro Wrestling Illustrated. AJ still resides in Gainesville, Georgia with his wife and four children. It's about to get real, raw and inspiring with AJ Styles. AJ Styles, there you have it. I mean, my gosh, this superstar has done so much in his career. What an incredible guy, too, that I got to meet before I left the WWE. I'm so excited to have him here on Making Their Way to the Ring. We're going to dive right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, with me, AJ Styles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, AJ, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. And for joining all of us. I mean, this is incredible to have you because you are, dude, you are at the top of your freaking career. It's crazy. Can, can you believe it? No, no, absolutely not. I, I never thought I'd be in the WWE. So to be doing so well right now, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, you know, I remember uh, before I left, we were we actually had you know a brief time. I don't remember exactly how, when. When did you come? Did you come in exactly? When? Uh, uh, Royal Rumble was my debut. Oh, so right. that was that's late January. In uh, in in of, of last year, 2016. Yeah. Okay, you know how it is in this world. Oh, <laughs> Everything just meshes together. So we actually worked together for about six months or so, um, mm -hmm. which was awesome. I immediately gravitated like this crazy friendship with you because we just um, hit it off so well, and that. You're such a real guy, and that's what's so incredible is that you're you're at the top of your game, number one like rated wrestler. Everywhere you turn around, everyone is just rookie of the. Wait, can you believe somebody said actually rookie of the year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that funny when I read that? I went uh, rookie Whoa. of the year. <laughs> Okay. 38 year old rookie. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, isn't it? I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, from that to it's just 
you've got such an incredible story too as to who you are and with your family and your kids and but before i get there wrestlemania is around the corner and here you are uh i know there's a little bit of controversy whether or not you're going to be headlining but i really hope you're headlining <laughs> talk to me about what's going on right now it's uh it's uh, it's a crazy story right now it just seems like that i'm jumping all kinds of uh, through all these loops and everything else just to find my way into the the main event of wrestlemania uh but now we're hearing that randy orton wants his shot which i thought that he gave up you know at wrestlemania so now i now that i beat luke harper and I, it's you know i have my shot this is my my yeah. chance at wrestlemania the main event uh now randy wants his chance that it's so it's like what is going on here yeah who knows what's going to happen i don't but uh it's intriguing and we'll find out yeah isn't it funny yeah a lot of people think that um that everybody knows like the superstars know exactly what's going on everything but really don't know because you don't know, know in the business things can change day to day moment to moment Sometimes you guys have been in the curtain where you think the outcome's going to be one thing, and then in the ring and get called that it's turned into something else. Yeah, the, the, we have no idea what's going to – like, we have an idea, hopefully, but that changes. It could be changing that day at TV or at the pay-per-view. You know, like you never know exactly what's going to happen, so you never know what to believe. And even when it comes to what we're saying, everything changes so quick, you don't really know what's going on. Yeah. Which, which isn't a bad thing. I, I don't mind that. I, I like the fact that we can change in an instant that way that we get the best out of the product that we can. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, how does that feel for you, though, knowing that you might be headlining WrestleMania? It's awesome. Uh, I want it. I mean, but then again, being at WrestleMania is, is great, too. So no matter what happens, as long as I have the opportunity to compete at WrestleMania, that's all that matters to me. Yeah. And, and, and to be honest with you, I mean, last year, record breaking, you know, uh, attendance, you know, for my first WrestleMania. So right. that was, that was pretty great. Yeah. And now, uh, to, to do another big one in Orlando. And I, you know, I have a couple fans down in Orlando. Uh, <laughs> if you watch the Royal Rumble, you, yeah. you might notice. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I remember us talking about this was leading into WrestleMania. You still didn't know yet whether you and Jericho or you and somebody else were going to be going to WrestleMania. And I remember telling you, I was like, dude, you've made such an impact since you got here, the Royal Rumble, that you are definitely going to be in Mania. And you were like, God, I really, really hope so. And I'm thinking to myself, you have no idea, like, how good you are and how much of an impact you make. Well, I, I, I try to stay humble and, and never assume anything, because we know when you break down the word assume what that means. And so yeah, uh, I, I just... I, like I said, I never assume. And in this business, you can't. It's true. Like, uh, again, it, things change so fast and you never know what's going to happen. So I just I just don't assume that, oh, I'm that good or, oh, I'm that, you know, I, I, first of all, I don't believe that I'm good or that I'm that great. I just, I want to be one day, you know, but uh, still see, right now you assume. say that. I mean, right now you still say I want to be. Uh, yeah, I, I watch matches. I, you know what? I try not to watch matches because when I do watch them, I, I get so mad at myself because I think they could have been better or our promo that could have been better that it just tears me up. So I know wow. there's at some point that I can hopefully get there, but I'm definitely not there yet. I want to be. You know, it's funny because my first instinct is to go, are you kidding me? But I get it because it's the same thing when I watch myself back sing or something like that. I'm like, oh, I could have done that no better. I got it. Everyone else was like, you were amazing. And I'm sitting there going, wait, you didn't hear that? So I, I get what you're saying. Only you can tell that. Right, right. And and I'm still learning. And, and, I, and I know that because, I, you know, I'm in there with guys who've been in there with the, the greatest. And they'll tell me something. I go, well, that doesn't make sense. And that's the more I think about it, I go, holy crap, they're, they're completely right. I need to do this or that. But that's great that you also have an openness about you that even though you've had such an amazing career, been in this industry, because you could have the attitude of, are you kidding me? I was voted number one. Get off <laughs> me. 
You know, you could have that attitude, but the fact that you're still willing to be open to somebody else's, um, you know, critique or opinions or, you know, help, it, that tells you how great you are, too, in that in that respect. Well, you know, when, when you got uh, a guy who's been in the business just as long as you have, but he's been in the ring with so many amazing performers in the WWE, like, and I'm talking about John Cena, you can learn a, a thing or three from this guy uh, mm -hmm. and a half. And uh, it was such a blessing being in the ring with someone like him to learn from him because the WWE is completely different than the ind independence or, or this place or that place or Japan. It's different. Right. Things are different. And I've learned that and I've had to learn quick in being here. Uh, but uh, luckily, I've, I've been in the ring with some amazing performers in the WWE. Yeah. Speaking of Cena, I've actually talked about him a lot on, on this show. Speaking about how sometimes, you know, the crowd, of course, <laughs> they're boom or whatever. But yet the match will come on and everybody's at their feet. And it's it's one of those things. I mean, the two of you have such amazing chemistry. And I'll never forget when you guys first faced off and the crowd went crazy. And we talked about it and you were like, I had no idea that they were going to have that in, you know, that that, that uh, response from us. Yeah, it's unbelievable. The back and forth. And I've said this many times, like we are two completely 100 percent completely different performers when we get in the ring. But there's something about if opposites attract, if that's really is a true statement, then yeah. it's it, it certainly is. Uh, true when it comes to John Cena and AJ Styles. We have unbelievable matches and um, just have the same mindset going into it. So I think that that's the recipe. That That's why it's such it's so much fun for us and so uh, I think good for the fans. Yeah. You know, Kurt Angle brought it up uh, when I interviewed him here. He mentioned that, he, that you are the type of wrestler, you do all the work. Well, I, I don't know <laughs> that I do all the work, but I, I do enjoy... I'm making the guy that I'm in the ring with it like a destroyer. I, I think that's that I get most satisfaction out of making someone else look good than making my own, you know, self look good. You know, I, yeah. I enjoy making someone else look so much better than, you know, not the, than they are, but just how much more can I, what can I do for them, you know, to, to bring it up another level? Can I, how can I get guys that they boo? Yeah. To cheer them. Like, how can I get them to cheer them? Like, I want to see if I can get that out of them. You know, I want to change how they feel about the character that they that we're trying to get something out of. Like, how can we get there? Wow. You know, and yeah. I get more satisfaction out of that. No, like, I, hear I, feel you. Like, I feel like I'm doing my job. If I yeah. Can do that. Well, it is. It's, it's not just a take business. And I think that sometimes that gets forgotten on some of the guys where they are like trying to figure out how many moves can I make? How can I make myself look good, look good instead of the fact that it is a team and it is about you and, and it's, it's kind of a dance. I mean, you have to have your partner. Absolutely. And, and I've had some good ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can't have an unbelievable match without two guys in the ring. It's, it can't be just one guy doing all the work. It doesn't work that way. I don't care what anybody says. I couldn't work a mop and, and have a great match with it. Uh, it's, it takes two, and and you got to find out exactly you know what it is that's going to make this match good. And a lot of it, you know, comes from the story that you're telling. So when we step into the ring, we just have to you know do what we do best. But it was the story that got us there, and people are invested in the story before we step in the ring. So therefore, this is going to be easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to get to know because. I'm loving everything I'm hearing, and I'm also know that a lot of this comes from the way somebody is grown up, right? So let's go back to you were born on a, a military base, by the way. That's right. Yeah, I and I, I didn't even know that until I was, you know, like doing some research and stuff, and I was like, oh my god, you and I do have a lot in common because I was born on a military base. <laughs> so well, yeah, so you were your dad was in was he a marine? Is that why yeah, you he were? Was Yep. Yeah, he was a Marine. Okay, that that's how my father started. He was in the Marines, oh. and then he went over to the Army. So, but yeah. uh, uh, so how many years was he a Marine for? Uh, well, he was he was there before I was born because my older older brother, who was uh, he's four years older than me, and he was born in Camp Lejeune, uh, and then I was. So he had to be in there for four or five years. Yeah. Before he before he got out, and and when he did get out, we moved back to Georgia. Which uh, you know, Gainesville area, uh, Hall County, yeah. where I've been all my, all my life. So um, that's you know, despite the fact that I was born in North Carolina, I'm a Georgia boy. 
That's just right. But you talk about your dad in the Marines and man, I know exactly what that's like. It's sometimes it's not fun having a dad as a Marine and, and they'll tell you once a Marine, always a Marine. Right. And it yes. didn't matter if he went to the army. Cause my brother also was a Marine and went to the army, but he's for sure always a Marine. Yeah. It's just, you can't take that away. I think that it kind of helped that dad had two girls. I think it's probably different with the guys. <laughs> oh, I bet you it is. And I'll we tell you why I know this. <laughs> well, because of your little girl. Exactly, because right? I am totally different with her than I am with my three boys. Like those boys, I'll get on them. I'll, you know, yeah. It's I'm like I'm, I, I, this happened this morning actually. Uh, I she was acting up. My daughter was, and I said, well, "Your mom's going to spank you." Her mom, <laughs> not yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do it. I know that's that's, <laughs> I can't. that's what it is. My mom was always the one that was the disciplinary. I was like, wait a minute, who went to the army? Who went to the Marines? Who went what? <laughs> yeah, but so all right. So you so how was that for you growing up with a father like that? Because I know that it's also been reported that he was an alcoholic, abusive. So can you tell us what? a little bit about? How that you was know, for and, you? and there were some things when, you know, he was growing up, he didn't have the best life either that his dad was uh, a, a little abusive or maybe didn't show him uh, enough attention and, and why his mom was the sweetest mom trying to protect him and stuff like my, my, my grandfather uh, didn't really turn his life around until he was in his late forties and fifties. Mm -hmm. uh, so my dad had a rough life and therefore when he went to the, the Marines, he was very re rebellious. Yeah. And got in a lot of trouble. He would he would rank up and then they demote him oh. because he would do something stupid. Uh, like that seemed like his mo. That's what he done. It's telling me stories how he would get in fight with MPs and, and whatnot. So he had a hard life and um, and, and I, I, I believe that there was no one really to show him how to be a man. Right. And therefore he didn't act like a man half the time. I, I thought that there was a lot of times where he was very selfish and. Uh, I don't think he took care of his wife or his, his family the way he should have. Uh, just little things like that. And when you, um, you know, it's not like you hate the world. You, you, you hate yourself. And when you hate yourself, you'll find ways to forget about it. So you go and you drink alcohol, right. which my father was an alcoholic. You know, he had demons just like everybody else does. He just mm -hmm. didn't know how to deal with them. Uh, and so he turned to alcohol and, you know, it's, uh, it was what it was when my dad wasn't drinking. Uh, I love being around him. He he never missed a game of mine, which was very important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, very proud of me. I know he loved me, but alcohol uh, took its toll. I mean, it, it, it did some bad things to our family. Um, and, and it's sad, but, you know, there were some times where we, we took some some beatings. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, that's the way it was in our house. And three boys who acted up, and I know how it is. Uh, sometimes when uh, anger and alcohol get together, it's not a good mix when it comes to disciplining your children. Right. So uh, I understand understand that now as an adult, and I don't love my dad uh, any less because he had an issue. I love my dad. Um, he's he's gone now, but I love my dad. Um, so and you know, despite what everybody thinks about an al alcoholic father. Yeah. You know, I, I put that aside and see the good in my dad too because. You know, I learned from my parents' mistakes, and right. that was one of them. Well, you know, how were you able to? First of all, how how did that affect you as a kid, though? Because I, you know, I had Brian Kendrick on the show, and he was talking about how he had an abusive father, and it led him to have so much anger inside. And it wasn't, he said, until just recently. He mentioned that he finally was able to handle that. He went through anger management and all. How were you able to handle it? Uh, well, I mean, I just uh, I loved my my brothers. You know, I looked up to my oldest brother a lot, and um, I just I, I I just found myself all I did was play sports growing up. That's all I did. So I had things like that going on, and and my dad showed me love because he was always there. He never missed a game. He was always there. And that was very important to me. Yeah. So like, it's not like I, I, there was never a moment where I hated my dad. Now there were some things that happened where this all ended, like where my dad would, you know, come home. Yeah. Uh, looking for a fight. Um, one night as we were, I was probably about 12, maybe 13. Uh, he came home looking for my fi a fight and me and my brothers were like, Oh crap. Um, and so we were just, Oh, just, 
sit down and be quiet and do do whatever he asks you. And my brother was 17 at the time, I do believe. And um, my mom said, I'm not taking this. I'm, I'm going to go stay with a friend. And so, because he was really rough on mom. Mom usually took up for, you know, if dad started getting on, on one of us, she would take up. And of course, she would take the beating too. Mm-hmm. So, um, but she's like, I'm not taking this. And she left. And then she's like, ah, oh. came back. I said, here's your lunch money for tomorrow. My mom literally did everything. And, um, and she was going to leave. My dad went out and threw her against the trailer, knocked her out. My, my brother, little did my dad know, my brother got in fights all the time. And he was kind of a, a bad dude. Okay. Uh, so he's 17 year old in high school yeah. and, uh, peeks out the door to see what's going on because he heard the bang against the right. trailer. And my dad, I think he picked up something. I don't know what it was, but my, my brother, my oldest brother just reacted pop, pop and knocks my dad out. We're like, Oh my God. Oh wow. Uh, the, sc- <laughs> the scariest man alive just got knocked out by my brother. Oh no. We're like, uh, dude, get out of here. Get out of here. And he's like, Nope. Ended up, you know, finally knocking my dad out a couple more times. And, uh, um, it, there was never a point where my dad, uh, that, you know, hit us or anything like that again, like that never happened again. Mm. But so it was a, as bad as it seems. And cause I, as much as I love my brother and my dad and stuff like that, it was a terrible moment. But at the same time, I was like, holy crap, me and my, we just went my brother, just me and my dad, this is the coolest things ever happened, you know? Yeah. Um. Uh, and, and that sounds terrible, but it was just like a crazy moment. But, you know, things that worked themselves it. out in a different way, you know. How did, did he finally get help? No, no. Uh, he, uh, my, my uh, mom and dad ended up getting a divorce later on, which that affected me as weird as that was. Like that. Ooh, it just, tell yeah, me. Yeah, it, 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 well, it seems like, you know, once things started working themselves out, like, okay, it's getting better. My dad's not drinking as much. In fact... You know, um, the most, I think the only thing he really done at that time was, uh, smoke pot. Mm-hmm. So, which is a lot safer to me than, than drinking. Right. Well, because uh, it mellows you out. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but anyway, they, they got, ended up getting a divorce and it was a rough divorce. And, and I was kind of mad at my mom, the way that that all went down because I didn't make any sense. Like it would have made sense if you would have divorced him years ago. Mm-hmm. But now that everything's working out now, and so, um, it was, it, that was, that kind of hit me rough because I, I was a sophomore in high school, but it kind of hit me hard because I was always proud of the fact that my parents were still together. And when that happened, uh, I kind of went and stayed with my brother and then stayed with my dad, you know, so I really didn't have anything to do with my mom. It just really affected me. I don't, I, I can't tell you exactly why other than the fact yeah. that I just wanted to be together, you know? Right. Did, did you guys like get to talk about it since then like did she get to explain to you why does it no no, no we just um i don't know that's it's it not a conversation we've had you know and do you wish to should, have that we probably should we probably should have it you know because there's still some weird things going in my head when it comes to my mom um uh, but hopefully one day we'll, we'll cross that bridge and we'll get it taken care of. I don't hate my mom. I love my mom. Yeah. It's just, you know, there's some issues with that, that, uh, I think any high schooler who at least love both their parents would, yeah. would go through. Right. Do you think you're prepared to actually hear her side though, and really understand her side? Um, yeah, I think so. And, and I, I do understand that my dad probably wasn't the easiest man to live with. Um, so uh, there are some things that I understand and that she took care of us 90% of the time. Uh, mm-hmm. but you know, we, we just haven't went there yet. Yeah. Uh, I never, I never was excited to see any of her boyfriends when she had them. Well, that's, uh, that's hard yeah, no yeah. matter what, of course. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it was to the point where I'd see a guy and I just give him the stare of, I don't like you. I don't know you. I don't like you kind of thing. So yeah. Uh, we've gotten past that. Uh, she's married now, so uh, we're past that. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to encourage you sometime to definitely have that conversation because I think you might. Some This has happened. You make it bigger than it is, mm-hmm. and then you finally have it, and you go, oh, why didn't we do this forever ago? Right? And just get it out and just over with. 
and right. have that understanding. And probably it's when you do that that all of a sudden your relationship will get even closer. Sure. So I, I'll hope for that, <laughs> for sure. But so when what? All right. So now you're growing up in the in the trailer world too. Like you lived in a trailer. Tell me about how that was for you. And for you, I'm sure at that time it was normal. <clears throat> Well, I, I didn't know any different. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't as horrible as, I guess, what other people saw it as. And, and it, well, it's kind of like, you know, um, uh, if somebody says, well, I grew up in the ghetto. Well, the trailer park's basically the ghetto. <laughs> it really is. It's just trailers. That's, yeah. that's the difference. Um, and so, like, I got in fights all the time. I didn't have nice clothes. I didn't have nice stuff. Uh, but I did appreciate the nice stuff that I did get. You know, I, I, the, the cool toys that I got the year later after every other kid, I still played with them as, as much, you know. So, you know, all that stuff that people talk about. The, the only thing I was remember is like uh, we had defects called on us one time. And and because both my parents had jobs, they uh -huh. couldn't help us out. We had four. My parents had four kids, but, but they had two crappy jobs. Wow. So we, so we can't help you out because you guys make too much money. Like, Oh my gosh! Wow. Okay, well, all right, fine. You know, that's that's cool. Wow! Well, I'll keep eating mayonnaise sandwiches. It's no problem. Oh you my know? gosh, that's crazy. So, you know, when it comes to the government system, that, yeah. that that never made any sense to me because my parents paid their taxes and everything else. I know this is going political for a second. That's okay. But that <laughs> but that didn't make any sense to me that, that they pay their taxes and stuff that they should be getting help when they needed it, but mm -hmm. they weren't because they had jobs. Because they pay into the system, no, they that's don't get not help right. from it. Right, because it's it's you got to encourage people to work. You right, have to. but I would I would think that if you do work, well, let's help them out a little bit. Let's find a way to give them our government cheese so they can have <laughs> yeah. cheese sandwiches yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So, wow. Okay. And and for for you, school then was were you academically like into uh, it? I, I, you know, I, I I wasn't very interested, and I can tell it in my kids that. You know, they're not very interested in school, which when they say school sucks, I'm like, yeah, I remember that, you know, mm. uh, but I just, I was only interested in sports and there was a couple times, there were a couple times where I had some amazing teachers that loved me. And I, I really believe if you love a student, yeah, they will find ways to, um, make you proud of them and which I did. And I'll never forget her name. I hope she watches this one day. Her name was Miss Holmes and she, and she loved me and I knew it and and I wanted to do well for her, so I tried my best. And not with that, you know, sometimes I really made her mad. Yep. But uh, I loved her, and she loved me, and so I did in the fourth grade, I did really well. Uh, and, and then in the eighth grade, the same kind of thing happened where the teacher made me believe in myself. So, you know, so I did pretty good in her class. But, yeah. but if you don't have that teacher, if you don't have the right teachers, then, well. Oh, I've not, always said how important yeah. teachers are. They really, yes. they really, and I, that's the other thing I can't believe is the pay for teachers compared to everything else. I will never understand it because they really do affect the lives of the children that are going to school. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be 40 this year and I still remember the name of my fourth grade teacher. Yeah, there you go. That's, that says something. And, you know, my wife was a teacher and I know how hard it is and, but I also knew how much she loved her kids. Right. And it made a difference. And so anytime she sees a kid that she may not remember them because they're much older now, mm -hmm. but they remember her because she loved them. Yeah. And that's what, it, to be a good teacher, you got to love, you know, kids. You got to. It doesn't matter what kind of degree or, you know, whatever you have. Right. If you don't love kids, then they're not going to do well for you. Just yeah. bottom line. And I've seen it too where there are some teachers that absolutely cannot stand children and kids and they have no patience. And I go, Pick a different profession, profession, please. <laughs> right? Yeah, and they should. Because it does affect. It really does affect. I mean, I had great teachers, and then third grade, I had a really horrible teacher, and it <clears throat> affected me in a bad way as well. Yeah. So it's very important. So, and I know, I know you went to where well, you started going to Anderson, uh, South Carolina. Did you even know you were my neighbor? Like I moved from from what? Spain. I went. Yeah, I moved to South Carolina. I'm a gamecock. So, oh, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I know we play we, your, your bulldogs. <laughs> yeah, we were, uh, when I went to Anderson, South Carolina, we were actually about a mile from Clemson. I don't know yeah, know yeah that. that's our enemy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, where, you know, Anderson's like a lot of old people, uh, honestly. They're older, and yes. So, it, it, so it's really, laid really back. Nothing, nothing to do. Yeah, nothing to do. Very laid back. Boring. Yeah. 
And then you, literally a couple miles down the road, you have Clemson where everything's going on. Right. So, oh, and uh, a lot of orange. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm not a bit. I, I used to not be a big fan of the orange, but uh, Deshaun Watson, who is from Gainesville, Georgia, ah. did did really well there. So there was a couple yeah. times this year where you had orange in the house. Oh boy. Yeah. So what you, what you were saying? So you, you decided though that Anderson. Yeah. It's, it's, it was it was a good experience for me. Yeah, uh, I wasted a lot of money uh, going to because uh, I had a half scholarship for wrestling. So it's a private school. Mm -hmm. So I ended up wasting a lot of money and didn't get a degree, didn't get a degree or anything, a bachelor's, nothing. So I just want I just I was like, why did I come here? I didn't enjoy school when I was in you know yeah high school. Why did, why would I come to college? And I'm just wasting money. And I wrestled uh, one year when I was there, and after that, I was like, I'm done. Uh, there's no reason for me to be here. So how long were you there before you left? Uh, about, uh, I think, one and a half. One years, and a half years? two years, yeah. So you went for wrestling, but then you get out and your friends are wrestling and you say, oh, I'm going to try this? So you go to well, a wrestling they, school? They they weren't wrestling. They, they were just huge fans and they were big jacked up guys and they were, you know, friends from high school that I knew. And they said, yeah, yeah we're going to find a place to train and be pro wrestlers. Like, oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, when you do, I'll go with you because I didn't think they'd find a place. The only place that we knew of was in Atlanta, you know, with WCW. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, but they found a place about 20, 25 minutes from the house. I was like, oh, okay, I'll go with you, I guess. And you never watched, like, you never, you, at this point, you hadn't watched wrestling on TV? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you guys I, watched I, it. It was okay. so hot back then. Yeah. You know, everybody was watching it. Um, so I enjoyed what, what, it. I always did. Yeah. What went through your mind? I mean, what you're just doing this because they're like, okay, let's do this. Well, I mean, I, I thought, I thought it could be something I could do. You know, I like, I, I never, like, I didn't watch wrestling as much when I was growing up because we didn't have the opportunity. Uh, I always liked it. So when it got really hot and everybody's watching, well, sure. You know, why not try it, you know, and see if I can do it. I think I could do something like that. And literally, as soon as I took that first bump in that ring, when you know you're just showing me what to do, yeah, it's like I can do this. I, I can, I'm you know, I just you couldn't have told me any different. I could, I was like, really, I so it was it. instant, yep, first it was bump, instant. And how hard was the training for you? Um, I, I loved it. Uh, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, meaning the ropes hurt, the mm -hmm. ring hurt. A lot of stuff hurt <laughs> that I didn't think it was supposed to. Yeah. So, but I enjoyed it so much. I just, I couldn't stop. I just couldn't get enough of it. And so how, how did you end up from <clears throat> school from, what was your first opportunity to go, oh my gosh, this is it. Um, well, I'll tell you this with, uh, within a month of my training, which is just totally wrong because I could do all these crazy flips within a month. A match. Yes, it was totally wrong. Wow. Okay. Just really dumb. Uh, I, I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, and it was probably an awful match. I've, I don't think I've seen it since uh, I've done it. But then uh, after that first match, they threw me in, an, in another match, like a, a rumble match. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was soon after that, I kind of went and done my own thing. But how did you get discovered? How quickly? Oh, uh, I want to say... Within a year, uh, I got the opportunity to go to WCW, and I turned it down because uh, it was five hundred dollars a week to to move or to drive to Atlanta every day and train there, which sounds like a great deal. But I had bills, you know, I was an adult. Yeah, and I and I made that at my regular job, so the insurance would have been much, uh, or not the insurance, but the taxes would have been much more. If I was an independent contractor, then they have been already paid for right. uh, at my regular job. So that's what I was thinking about at the time. You were business, so, business, business. I, well, I mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't have a lot of money, so I would just, um, I assumed, uh, you know, this, I need to keep some money. I needed to find ways to save some money. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and eventually I wanted to marry my girlfriend, you know, so you there's guys, a lot you, of things that came to play. Your childhood sweethearts? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. High oh, high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So then <clears throat> when you turned WCW, then then how did, how did the opening come? Well, it was soon. 
I think my daughter's crying. Oh, I can hear them. So cute. And I definitely want to talk about your kids. Oh, man, they're probably going to come in here and my dog's over there whining. <laughs> <them out>. Anyway. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's a typical <laughs> household. But, but uh, uh, Wild Side was doing really well. This was where I started training. Yeah. And was doing really well. Um, and, and therefore, WCW had uh, a developmental uh, relationship with Wild Side. So they bring their guys from WCW going through the power plant, let them wrestle there, get some experience from some small crowds. And while they were coming to check out those guys, they saw me and another guy having some great matches. Uh, Air Paris was his name. And, and then it was soon after that, they invited us to have a dark match uh, at, in WCW uh, in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Flew us up to Baltimore to have a dark match. I mean, I, we must have done well because they offered us a contract soon after that. And God, now where are your friends at this point? Did your friends already go, ah, never mind, we're not in this? <clears throat> They quit. They did. Uh, yeah, they. Uh, did, well, they. Uh, I assume they had so much going on that it was, you know, it was hard for them to get to um, training and whatnot. So they yeah. just had to give it up. Where I wasn't missing out. I was going to find a way, and uh, and I was training plus wrestling on the weekends. Like I'll, the the best thing about where I w got trained at was the fact that I had the opportunity to also wrestle there. Mm -hmm. So and then on. Another night, I got to go to Atlanta, and I'd wrestle at a bar, uh, as, as crazy as that sounds. Yeah. And so, but the, the, the great thing about it was I was getting experience. So I, I like to say that I got trained by literally everybody I ever wrestled. What would you say in your early days was the hardest thing for you, though? Um, <clears throat> convincing my girlfriend, who, who was probably my fiancé at the point, um, that someday... This is going to work out. Someday this is going to provide for us. I had to tell her this because she wanted to spend the weekend with me doing something fun. Right. But I was dragging her to wrestling events that I was doing. Yeah. It's It's got to be terrible for her to, to have to do this every weekend. But I, I would say that was the hardest thing because it, it wasn't not making the money because everybody thinks that, yo, you're a wrestler and you make amazing money. Uh, not, not when you're an independent guy. No. I was hope I was hoping to get just a little bit of cash so I could pay for gas. Yeah, and whatnot. But other than that, I was just doing it for the experience. Yeah, because we I, I talk a lot about uh, you know with other wrestlers and all that. A lot of times too, by the time you pay for your hotel, for gas, you know, maintenance, all of that, uh, you're actually paying to wrestle. Yeah. Well, a lot of us uh, would drive back the same night, so there were some. Um, hard times like that may have been the hardest was trying not to fall asleep on the drive back home yeah you know uh, because if you if you stayed the night then you're just wasting money unless you knew a buddy that you could spend the night with you know because we would I mean, we go pretty far i mm -hmm. mean i remember driving up to philadelphia um <clears throat> then you, then you try to stay in the closer states but even after you've wrestled maybe the show goes to 11 o'clock then you're still going to drive home from nashville which is another four hours you know, it gets pretty late pretty quick, and and if you've been working all day, yeah, it takes it takes a toll on you. Yeah, and isn't it something that you're still driving to these days? These days, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> but but the great thing about these days is, is is that you may drive three or four hours, but if you're a family man like, like myself, you enjoy that time by yourself. And oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> it's not such a bad thing. Who do you ride with these days? Well, I used to ride with Anderson and Gallows. You know, my buddies from right. Japan. Uh, but when we split, yeah. I was sort of riding by myself. Seriously. Yeah, so you're, all by my lonesome. So you're going all of these hours of TV, all of this. Uh, it, it is stressful. There's no doubt about it. You've got a lot going on. You're being pulled in every different direction, whether it's media, whether it's doing a promo, and then you got to go over your match, and you're having your match, and then you're getting in the car, and you're driving by yourself. But then again, like you said, are you enjoying your downtime? I really am. And, and my, own, my own schedule is what I love about it the most. It's like, I don't have to, Hey, are you ready to go? You ready to go? Let's, nope. Yeah. I just, I'm on my own time. And, and for me, um, I, I'm literally the first guy at the building. And the reason is because I like to set up my video games because I'm a nerd Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's my time to just relax and just think about nothing other than what's in front of me right. and just chill. 
do you, do you, do you and Xavier Woods go at, go at it with, with, uh, video we, games? We have, he likes different games than I do. I think, uh, he likes a little bit of everything. I'm very specific in what I like. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're, we're, we are different in the games that we like, but as far as getting in front of it and being big fans of it, pretty much anything that comes on as far as uh, electronics. Yeah. That's us. Which, yeah. by the way, we actually covered your story here because um, we heard about your entire, was it console, the game station or something being stolen? Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. So, Did they get to yes. the bottom of it? it it's my fault. Why it, do you it, say that? In the, in the grand scheme of things, it's my fault because I was the last match on the show, and therefore I wanted to get – I just wanted to leave. I wanted to get to the hotel and go to bed. And I left my bag in there. I dressed in this area, but my bag where I was playing my games was in this area, and I just – so I didn't think about it. I just left. In, in so the locker room you're talking about? What was that? In the locker room. Yes, in yes. the locker room. Um, so – you know, oh, so I, it wasn't it, until it, like the late, like later on in the in the night or the next day that you realized it. Is that what it yeah, was? Yeah, was the next morning. I go, where's my bag? Oh, I see. Oh what my you're god. Saying. Oh no. So, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't give anybody the right to take something that isn't theirs. Obviously. Uh, and uh, it's sad that it's cool to do stuff like that. You know, I, I, I so many times I've thought about in this day and age, where are all the heroes? Like, yeah, I want to yeah. be a hero. Yeah. That's what, I want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't, I don't get somebody being any different. That drives me nuts. I don't get that kind of a person. Yeah. Like I, I would want to be the guy. Hey, yeah, I got your bag, dude. I've done or, that before. Yeah. Where I've actually feels, turned in good, something. Though, it feels so good. Literally the stare on somebody else's face. Like you just returned that to me and the money, everything is still at what it yeah. feels great. It feels yeah. amazing. Yeah. What well, did you get a new one? Uh, well, I, I, uh, I've already, already had one at the, uh, the house. Okay. So I literally just packed everything up and ready to go. So it didn't affect me Yeah. as far as my game playing and any whatsoever. Like I actually carried an, an older console, uh, an Xbox 360, which people go, well, why do you play an Xbox? Yeah. I still, enjoy, I still enjoy games on that. Yeah, it and, doesn't matter, uh, right. And I didn't, have, I didn't have to be hooked up to the internet to use it. Yeah. And so, That's uh, true. now the, the 360 has gone away. Now I'm, I've upgraded, not really upgraded. I just went, I've taken my Xbox One on the road, which sucks to an extent because a lot of times I have to be on the internet to play and yeah. not and the easy arenas. to do at some of the venues. Mm -mm. So. Yeah. What's your favorite game? Right now, there's a game called Sniper Elite 4, and I'm addicted to it, and <laughs> it is very gruesome. Oh, my God, uh, really? <laughs> it, it, it's a World War II uh, kind of gameplay, and so you're a yeah. sniper, and yeah, my kids, every time I play it they're, when, at the house, they're like, <gasps> oh, they really? All that. So, yeah, it's that kind of Oh, my thing. gosh. And so you're okay with your kids seeing that much violence? They watch movies, and yeah. so they see that stuff all the time. Um, and if we're talking about war, then they need to know what that's like. Mm. Like that's not a good thing, right? But it it is part of our history and it has happened. But maybe they shouldn't see a bullet going through somebody's skull. But uh, you know, the, I'm sure they're going to see worse things than that uh, as they they get older and watch these films. I right? Mean, there's some crazy stuff. In oh, it. it's just so bad. <laughs> Did you not get with your dad being in the Marines um, or any of your brothers, anybody pursue the whole continuing and being in the services? My uh, second to the oldest brother uh, was a Marine. And oh, then yeah. You, you mentioned the, this, right. Yeah. And then switched to the Army. Right. And then went, and then went back to the reserves. Mm. Um, so uh, he he's probably stayed in the longest, but he's now out. Again, I don't think he's going back anymore. He's been over to Afghanistan a couple times. Oh wow! I think I think, uh, and then my my youngest brother uh, was in the army, and he was over in Afghanistan. And so, and you never got the calling for that inside of you. Um, I would think that if there were nothing for me here, that as I was growing up, uh, maybe if Anderson had, Anderson College hadn't been there, or my wife. I mean, uh, I probably would have went at the Marines. Uh, in fact, I, that'd be the only service that I, like, I, I always thought the Marines were the baddest of the baddest. And I love the way they look in the dress blues. And they're all, <laughs> yeah, they're so in, intimidating, uh, just the way they're dressed. And uh, when you compare them to the, all the other branches of the military, right. 
there is no comparison. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You know, that's, I'm a Marine. The suit is pretty badass. I'm a Marine kid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you glad, though, that uh, this has been your calling and your avenue? Absolutely. Uh, I, I believe that that I've been put in a position for a reason. Uh, yeah. I, I believe that the Lord's like, yeah, he's not going to be good at anything else. Let's make sure he goes this avenue right here. Um, and it's 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 given me an opportunity to talk to people that I never would have had the opportunity to talk to and, and share with people that I never had the opportunity to share with and meet kids and put smiles on their faces. And I don't care what anybody says to me, that is the best part was when you get to make a kid's day, when you just get to make them smile. When you, even adults, yeah. you, you throw your shirt out there to them. It <laughs> makes it, I, like, that is, right? That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, you know, sometimes when we see the um, WrestleMania <clears throat> recap, right, and then they show the audience and all, and you see the faces and... And you realize, man, it, it is a form of letting everybody forget all their troubles, and they're just focused on being entertained 100% lost it's in it. Payment. Yeah. So with, um, um, oh, my God, Mark, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to cut this real quick just because I lost <laughs> my train of thought just because, oh, my God, my head is so, like, stopped up. Um yeah, I know. So just, I just wanted to look down on my nose because there was something definitely that I wanted to talk to you about with. Sure, sure. Oh, I know what it was. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready. All right. So you've talked uh, some about your faith. I mean, I know that you really believe in it. Was it hard for you to be in a business like this? It really, it doesn't, It faith is not one of those things that's a really big thing around it, right? Right. I mean, it. Heck, it's, it's gotten to where it's not a really big thing in Anywhere. this world anymore. Yeah. How um, do you feel about from, that? Well, it's, it's sad. Um, I think that it's that it's easy not to to believe in something, to know that, you, you know, there's not a higher power. That's an easy way to, to believe is that there's not something higher, higher than they, that, that, oh, well, I'm just another, you know, grain of, you know, sand, but that's not true. I believe that everybody's important and there's a place for everybody and there's, um, something for everybody here. Um, we're all here for a reason. I, I just chalk up so many things to, well, I guess I wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, you know, I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, like, uh, I, I'm not in control of everything. I'd like to think I am, but I'm not. And when you let go of that, it makes life a lot easier. Did you um, always have God in your life or did you find him later? I always, I always believed I, even as a little bitty kid, I just, I always talked to God and like, I just, but I didn't, I don't know if I, um, his name was Jesus, uh, in, in my belief. Uh, mm -hmm. but I just always knew there was so somebody else. Like it wasn't, I wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. And, um, and as I got older, it, I wasn't, it wasn't until high school until I actually got saved. Um, but then it doesn't mean I turn into this like, oh, I'm super Christian. Ah! Yeah. Because that wasn't it at all. In fact, it was much worse than that. Can you tell us that experience about how you got saved? What was going on before? Oh, well, uh, before I got saved, I was living with a girl. I was 16 living with a, a girl. And uh, and you can only imagine what happened. Hmm. Uh, it's a, it's a miracle. I don't, I didn't have any kids then, you know, um, it was wrong. And, and when I got saved, there were a lot of things that popped up and I made excuses as to why it's okay to do these certain things with her because I loved her, which if I loved her, then I wouldn't have done these things because we weren't married and I didn't, you know, there's a lot of things I could throw out there. Uh, but and, and anyway, I started making these excuses and then it just like, why it just dawned on me. Like, I am not going to marry this girl. Why am I, what's going on? Hey, wait a minute. Mm. And so I, I just believe it was all these questions that need to be answered. And, and it was when I got saved that they started needing the, the answers to the questions. But did and, somebody reach out to you? To, uh, how did that whole process work? Oh, well, I went to a judgment house. I don't know if you're familiar with a judgment house. No. So, so usually it's around Halloween and a church puts it on. And it's a play or an act. And we'd a group of kids would go into the room, you know, and, and we'd sit down and watch this kid wearing a blue shirt and this kid wearing a red shirt. And then they would put on their act of, you know, player, whatever. And then we moved to another room, but there'd be two different people, you know, they were, but you knew this guy was 
uh, let's say Keith because he was wearing the blue shirt and you knew this guy was Sam because he was wearing the red shirt. And anyway, so they play out this act and you would experience maybe uh, a car wreck. Something happened. Both guys, both kids get killed in a car wreck and and you would go to heaven with one and you go to hell with the other. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And so when we got back to at the end of it, they saw, sat us all down and they said, you know, um, if anybody, you know, wants to get saved, here's your opportunity. Because, you know, uh, everybody's head was bowed and eyes were closed. And if anybody wants to get saved, you know, you can raise your hand. Of course, I was like, well, I'm not saved. And and while it didn't scare me, it may just made me think that uh, there was something more out there for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I did not want to go to hell. Um, <clears throat> so I raised my hand because I'm sure that all my friends would, would certainly raise theirs. I was the only one. Wow. And yeah, so there, uh, yeah, I was the only one who got saved that night, but it changed me. Wow. And what did your friends say to you? Even, yeah, I mean, at I, that point. I, I remember my, my, one of my best friends and, and, uh, and I said to him, I said, wow, I just don't feel saved. I don't really feel any different. And he's like, well, that's just Satan trying to tell you you're not. You're she safe, was saying bro. that. Yeah. He said that to me. But he didn't raise his hand. So he how did was- yeah, uh, but I guess I just didn't, uh, like he had got saved uh, when he was a little bit younger or something like that. But, you know, I, I think this, despite what anybody thinks, that just because you get saved doesn't mean that you turn into this majestical, uh, uh, super religious person. You've got to have someone teach you and you got to have someone show you how to be a man of God, how to be a woman of God. There's got to be that certain someone in your life. And that's why, like... Uh, like a, a youth to be a part of a youth group is so important because hopefully there's someone there, the youth pastor that is this amazing person like I had and who showed me how to be a man. And, and, but, but all this didn't happen when I got saved. Uh, it was not until I started dating my now wife mm-hmm. who made me go to church with her and met this youth pastor who really changed things around. I see. Do you instill that in your children now? I, I try to. I make sure that they know. Uh, they, my two oldest boys, uh, they they got saved. Uh, you know, they're young, and sometimes uh, you get. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. I, I, I'm wondering if, as if they get older, if they if they did or they didn't, will they still remember it and why they started? You know, so uh, it makes me wonder if, if when they get older, if they get saved again or whatever, right. or rededicate reded- their life. Yeah, um, but it's. Um, as long as they know they're like, I, I'm, I'm going to be, uh, hopefully some of they go, well, my dad believes, and this is why he believes. So I'm going to be like that. And my mom believes this is why she believes. And, and I've seen it in her life. So, you know, I, I feel like we got to teach them and show them what a Christian mom and dad are supposed to be like. Yeah. And, and, and it's not going to be perfect. It never is. Right. But. Your kids are 11 and 10. My oldest two are 11, 10, and then I have a seven, seven and a two. And a two-year-old. How did the little girl, when she came into this life, because you had three boys, how did that change things for you, or did it? Uh, well, uh, it, it, the first one it changes everything. You, uh, you, you just having one kid changes every, your perspective on life. Yeah, I can't believe uh, you have four, by the way. This is, blows my um, mind. <laughs> but uh, I... I I, I just saying to my my third son, I was just telling him, I said, he said, uh, I said, I love you. And he goes, I love you more. I said, I bet you don't, you know? <laughs> so like, it's, it's just awesome being a dad, but to be a dad to a little girl is completely different. And to know the story and how this came about, because my wife and I, after number three boy, I was like, I think we're pretty much done, you know? And my wife agreed. And the doctor said, well, you never know. You guys are still young. So what if we just put an IUD in ah. and you guys can figure it out? I'm like, okay, because oh. that's better than birth control. That's, that's better than the right. pill. Right. It's supposed to it's be. A, it's a four, yeah. It's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. For certain people. <laughs> uh, so, uh, obviously you have super sperm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Like it was like, she's sneaky is what it is. I think. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I was at a, I was at a show and my wife called me crying and I was like, whoa, what and she told me and i was like just blown away oh my gosh she, she told you over pregnant. the phone and you're at a show how many miles away do you remember where you were i, I think i, I want to say i was in 
I want to say Boston or something like oh that. Oh my gosh. It's not like you could just get in the car and drive home. No. Wow. And so like, I'm, I'm just like, my head's blowing up. I can't believe this is happening. And like, Oh man. And, um, but it was like, it's almost like, what the heck? You know, so shocked, but a little mad, but then going, well, what are you going to do? You just want to enjoy it, I guess. Yeah. And, and when we went to the doctor, we had to get, they had to get the IUD out oh. and you, and, and they put it up, uh, on the monitor where they could see everything. Um, and you could see it, it was just a little round circle, but it was the way the IUD was pushed on it. It would look like a beam. Um, oh, so usually when they pull the IUD out, uh, there's a miscarriage within one or two days. Oh my gosh. And, uh, it was very, uh, emotional. Uh, and I'll tell you the coolest thing about that wow. is that our doctor, we all prayed before he took it out. He prayed. There you go. Uh, and I thought that was, uh, amazing. And I was emotional and my wife is just like, it, I don't, it just, all I could see was a circle, but that was a baby to me, but, yeah. uh, but I didn't want to lose that. And, and there were some rough patches in there where my wife was bleeding. And we thought, we thought certainly she lost the baby and right. lo and behold, uh, all three of my boys were natural. My little girl decided she was not going to turn. Uh, so we had to have a C-section with oh. our last one. Oh, wow. And, and, uh, it was, it was so weird and scary. And, but I remember, uh, the doc finally pulling her out and I was like, is it still a girl? He looked and he just kind of looked at me like, yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, she, and, but, uh, she was so perfect when she came out. It yeah. was just like, I was, I was holding back so many tears. Right. It was so like, um, just uh, if you because I had the mask on, but I was <laughs> you know, doing a lot of that, you know, when, when I saw her, it was just, it was awesome. Oh, was so and I've, I've seen pictures of you with her and it's just so endearing. And you can see that she just has a soft spot for you, for, you know, like you have a soft spot, obviously for her. Oh man. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, I mean, sometimes I realize that things like this happen, like, think about it. You guys get the, you know, you get the call and you're like at first going, what? And then there's difficulty and all of a sudden there's the uh, maybe you might lose her and oh my gosh, right? And doesn't that, that happen though sometimes where it makes you appreciate the baby even more? All of a sudden it, it, you get that decision right there and you go, oh no, I really want her. Yeah. And oh yeah. It's, so it helps you actually receive her into the world and into your life and into your, you know, your chaos and all of that even even more when you have adversity. Well, well, yeah, and you got to understand is that my wife has four brothers. I had three brothers. Yeah. We just like it's, we don't have the girls on this side. This just wow. we don't, we're not going to have them. And and so for, to be told it was a girl because we had to get checkups pretty often. Yeah. Uh, and then for them to say yeah, it's a girl, I'm like, there's not saying nope. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. And it's just, that's why I, even when she came out, I still had to ask if it was a girl because I just couldn't believe it. No. And even now to this day, my wife is like, we'll be laying in bed and our daughter sleeps with us. I know it's 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 a dumb move, but. I, uh, you know what? You're the parent. You get to decide. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? There's no rules to raising kids. <laughs> but uh, we'll. we'll she'll roll over and like, we'll just look at him like, can you believe we have a little girl? Like, yeah. It's, it's crazy. What has she done now? How has she changed you or has she? Um, I don't know that, um, she's changed me. Uh, I just I, like, I can't explain the difference between a boy and a girl. Like the way that this, the, it's, it's not, it's not that the love is different. It's just, it, you use it in different ways. Like I just want to hold her and I can't wait to, Oh, I love it when she tries on her shoes. And that's so weird for a dad <laughs> to say, but I love seeing her and she tries on everybody's shoes. <laughs> that's great. You know, and, and some things were a little actually very uncomfortable for me. Um, like changing her diaper. I can like a pee pee diaper was okay. Yeah. But a poo poo diaper <laughs> was very hard for me because <laughs> I had boys. Right. And I had to learn pretty quickly. You don't wipe it one direction because right. you 
you know, like it was it was stuff that like I didn't want to know. I'd be like, just please <laughs> la, 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 somebody else change her. <laughs> and yeah. she's only two. Wait till she's, you know, <laughs> older. Here we go. Yeah, You're gonna no, be yeah. learning a lot saying, about what women I, go through. <laughs> well, I can tell you this, and I've been asked this question. Uh, I will my boys uh, will will not be treated any different than they than I treat my daughter. Uh, and I, and I, the older I, I've gotten, the more I realize that there's a reason why things are waited until you're married, and and I'm going to treat them all the same. I'm going to be just as disappointed in them as I am in her if something were to go down that way. I'll love them regardless, but I'm going to try to teach them this way because I've learned throughout you know my experience because yeah. I wasn't a virgin when I got married. My wife was um, that some things are really are truly worth waiting for. Wow. That's really special too. And I, will, I will say this, that even though uh, I did have sex before I was married, I, I didn't with my wife. So I waited another four and a half years for her. There you go. So I, I did kind of wait for her, I but I wish special. That, that, that she could have got the whole wait. Yeah. You know, I think it's so special and people um, don't realize. And, and nowadays, oh my gosh, you look at movies. I mean, people meet out at a bar and next thing you know they're in bed and i'm like this is blowing my mind right it's just so yeah it's crazy it's so like like it's nothing like it's just a kiss and it's so much more than that for sure well, well it, it, we've made it cool to yeah. especially be the guy that, that has sex yeah. with the girl like it's so cool yeah like you do you know what's cool to a dad it's for the kid to wait right that's cool to a dad especially like me like whole like the whole Tim Tebow and stuff like that. I'm like, I want my daughter to marry a guy like that. That's yeah. what I, you know, but it's, it's easier said than done. And, and, and people make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, I understand that. It's, but man, if you can, if you can wait, wow. Yeah. Now going back to you, because if you being a father and you went through so much with your dad, I want to know something because I think it's important. A lot of times, and you even said this, your father went through a lot. So it kind of made him who he was because he just kind of continued the family tree, right? You mm -hmm. you broke that somehow. How did you do you do you remember like you weren't into alcohol or anything, right? I mean, I, as a teenager, I, I certainly experienced stuff like that. Yeah. But it wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't. And, uh, I don't enjoy the taste of alcohol. I don't know how anybody does. Uh, but uh, it, I just I always feel like you can either you can follow in their footsteps, your parents, or you can learn from their mistakes. And I chose just to learn from their mistakes and, and not all parents are bad. So if you follow in some parents' footsteps, that's not a bad thing. Right. But uh, I, I learned from mine. And, and uh, I think my wife had a lot to do with, you know, making sure I didn't do too many stupid things uh, as I go older, got older, you know, yeah. spending wise and, and getting stuff we couldn't afford and getting credit cards we didn't need and stuff like that. She definitely was a smarter one when it came to that. So, uh, financially, um, we didn't have a lot, my mm -hmm. wife and I, but we found a way to make it work. Yeah. It's beautiful though, because I mean, think about how your children are growing up compared to, you know, what, what you went through. Also, yeah. You, you know, and, and them. they both, they both have their positives though, because even though I, you know, it was a little bit harder for me growing up, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate what I have now. Yeah. But the problem is, is I want to give them everything that I didn't and ah. I find myself spoiling them. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. And so I, now I have to, now I have to really go and draw it back and go, when's your birthday? I'm not, I'm not paying for that. You can, you can go feed the dog and you can earn money that way, there but you I'm go. not getting you that. Yeah. So, but I've had to, you had to, you know, bring back the reins a little bit and go, Oh crap, I'm spoiling them. I'm making right. them terrible kids, you know, and not appreciating stuff. Yeah. Well, I, th I'm sure you're doing a great job and, uh, I'm congratulations on your kids for sure. I, I gotta <laughs> take Thanks. you back to, I mean, I know you spent 11 years at TNA. Um, but, and w what an incredible career. Oh my God. I mean, from the slams to the, I mean, you've got every, I think, uh, championship there is to have, right? I how, do you. What was your life like in, in TNA? I mean, and and did you look at WWE at all? I mean, I know you were, you actually had a developmental deal, right, in two thousand two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I had a developmental deal uh, to move to Cincinnati, but at that time I was married, and ah, okay. I didn't think it was right to move to Cincinnati, even though my wife said go. Uh, it wasn't right to leave her, have her move back in with her mother. That's my job is to take care of her. Mm -hmm. And so um, I turned down respectfully 
the the, the developmental deal with WWE, mm-hmm. and then within like a couple of months, TNA started up, which I thought was just another independent thing that was probably happening. So uh, it wasn't a big deal to me, but you know, within the six months, and so I was like, okay, this might be something. Uh, yeah. And as it grew on, it grew. Um, I grew to love that place because I felt like it was something that I and other guys were building. Yeah. We were building, we were the foundation. We were going to build this into something great. And at some point in time, you know, at one point in time that it was great. It was a great place to be. We, there was, we were having a lot of fun. We were changing the way people looked at wrestling, you know? Yeah. Um, and when you want to become a lesser version of something else, and when I say that, I mean WWE light. You're not giving people an alternative. They, if they want to watch WWE, they're going to watch WWE. You got to be something different. Uh, so when you went to the square, they went to the regular square ring. I mm-hmm. thought that was a big mistake. And when you brought in guys that people, you know, I don't know if they really, really wanted to see anymore because they had grown so used to a certain style of wrestling that was happening at TNA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there was just a number of things that that brung brung it down and um it was guys like christian and kurt though who came over before all this you know happened that really like sparked tna made it something you know yeah bigger bigger it was growing because of them and but it was you know within about 2009 2010 around there i think um they forgot who they were Mm. and and didn't rely on the guys that got them to the ball game in the first place and to the you know to the big game anyway and and therefore it started going downhill and you know despite all that i just uh, saw myself as this was my home i was loyal to tna but when they but when you won't allow me to take care of my family the way i think that i should be able to after all the time and all the years i put in well then uh, it's not making much sense to me mm-hmm. you know um, and so ultimately that's why I left because they wanted me to take less than what I was making when I haven't done anything wrong. And, and then I tried to be the best ambassador for the company that I could, you know, yeah. all, a lot of things I thought I did right, but they didn't see it that way. And so I left, I, I bet on myself and left. And wow. And what a great bet you made. <laughs> well, how did the transition into WWE happen? Well, uh, you know, first I go to Japan uh, which oh, yeah. was a, a, a big step. I mean, look, huge. I, I'm, uh, to say, okay, I'm going to go and try to do this on my own. It was a lot of prayer that went in because I was very nervous because you're, you know, there's a guaranteed paycheck here, but you don't know what you're getting here. Right. And if you get hurt, well, you're losing a paycheck. Yeah. So, um, I went to ring of honor. That's basically how I told TNA that I wasn't working with you anymore and showed up at the ring of honor show and let them, and I had a great match. Right. Uh, they they knew that it was Surprise. on the fence. They knew that. I think they. It's not like I surprised them with it, but I think they may have been a little shocked that I made ultimately like, like yeah, I don't know what I don't know if I'm going to sign the. And you know what? I'm going to. Yeah. Tell them I'm working for Ring of Honor. You know that was kind of way it happened, <clears throat> and and then within a couple months I was back. I went to New Japan, and just like I don't know, I felt like I was reborn. Uh, with, with some crazy stuff. Uh, it was just, I uh, met Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows and a, yeah. a bunch of other great guys there. Bullet Club. And, yes. Oh. Yes. And, and, and I think we, we changed New Japan for the good, you know, in, yeah. in a certain way. And not saying that was me. I think it was all of us that had a lot to do with it. Um, it was just the timing. And, we, and people could tell that the guys in that group were just out there having fun. Yeah, like we were, we were too. We just said we were just having fun, do what we want. Um, and then there, you know, it wasn't long after that, uh, TNA came back to me and said, "Okay, you know, we'll give you what, pretty much what you're asking for." Yeah, you'll come back. Uh, and I said, "Well, I'm not coming back without somebody. I need, I need Anderson Gallows. I said I want them to come with me." And um, and it, we actually had a meeting over at Dixie Carter's house. Um, there were still some things we weren't sure about and, and I had talked to, um, WWE a little bit, but they hadn't got back to me. So I just assumed they had other things going on. They didn't need AJ Styles, which mm-hmm. is WWE is a big place. I get it. I'm not the most important thing in the world. I know that. Um, 
But luckily, uh, Triple H had him and I had a great conversation, like a thirty minute conversation. The first time we talked, and I go, "Oh, this is this is going well." And yeah, and within a, and a, within a, like a week, the ball really started rolling, and finally, the, the rumors got out, and uh, we uh, we told TNA that we weren't coming there, and and that and was New it. Japan, we had to tell New Japan, and they go, they almost thought we were bluffing, so they oh. talked to someone, and. They talked to the internet, and that's how it blew up from the internet. Ah, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so, how when you spoke to WWE though, did you say I would love to come over, um, but my guys have got to come over too? Well, I said, <clears throat> this is kind of funny. Is that I said, hey, listen, well, I've got these two other guys, and it, Gallows and Anderson, mm-hmm. that uh, we were going to go as a group over here. And they were like, well, we're just interested in you. Right now. I'm like, oh, okay. And within that same week, they go, no, we want all of you. Ah, there you go. And so, and so it was like, uh, yes, you know, because I didn't want to pull them away and then like get their hopes up. And then, uh, well, sorry, guys, just me, you know. Yeah. yeah so that's... I'm so glad that they got to come with me. And yeah, but that a says a difference. lot about you too, the fact that you could have been like, <laughs> Wow, guys, I got called by WWE, see ya. (laughs) But it shows what a caring and giving, again, giving person you are, that you're like, this is awesome, and let me see if I can bring somebody else with me. Uh, Well, I just feel like there there was a hot uh, group of guys right there, and and, um, I wish I could have bought all of them. But uh, they're very loyal, as they should be, uh, to the people that got them to, you know, where they're at today. Mm -hmm. And, And so, and Gallows and Anderson were ready to come back home. There's, they spent a lot of time in Japan, a lot. Uh, yeah. Anderson, in fact, uh, I think eight years. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's and, a lot. and Gallows was over there. When they'd go over for tours, they'd be gone for a whole summer. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you you miss time with your kids, and both those guys right. had kids. So right. it was very it was hard on them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, just coming because just coming back to to the states was such a blessing, and to come back to WWE and them not um, not sure how this thing was going to work out. It's just it's unbelievable. It is so where we're at right now. It is so crazy, so awesome. You guys definitely deserve it. The crowds love you too, and it is obvious that you guys go out there and you're performing to have fun. And that's what I always told people too. You know, sometimes when they get ah, I want to do, I was like, just have fun. That's the secret to everything. Yeah. Right. One hundred percent. Have passion, obviously. Know what you're doing. You know, put the work in. But ultimately, you're in entertainment. You need to go out there and not only, you know, Kendrick was talking about that. That he, he now at this stage and age, it really kind of does the whole thing for himself. Like he's like, I want to go out and have fun. Not necessarily, Mm -hmm. am I going to worry about? Am I entertaining you, you and you? But he says, and and then all of a sudden, I end up entertaining everybody because they're buying into my passion and what I love to do. It's exactly right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It, it, if you see me in Gorilla, you'll see me kind of smiling, jumping around, getting, trying to be warmed up because I'm yes. excited about what's about to happen because I know it's good. Yeah. And, that, and that's fun to me. And and they're, I'm having fun. Were so you, I know that they're going to enjoy it. Yeah. Were you okay with the uh, the split that you guys split up in the two different, um, you know, Raw, was, SmackDown? I, I was a little surprised. Uh, I will say that. Uh, I didn't expect it. And it was, um, I, I was like, what you guys where i thought you're going to smack oh my god um and so just being with those guys for so long to yeah. have them you know all i don't know it was just it was a weird moment and it was i, th- I think they caught that live it was live when they did it and ah. I was like, oh man yeah. i was really surprised you could see it on my face you know it's so, funny uh, it didn't surprise me at all I don't know why. Yeah. I felt like you guys, you've done so much. I think it was a really smart decision on WWE to do that. They've really been able to branch out and do their own thing as well. And you've had your old, you know, SmackDown has been amazing for you. Yeah, it has. And, and these guys with the, you know, they're winning the the tag team titles and all. I, I think that's, uh, it's been good for them. Yeah, it all worked out the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Uh, every bit of it. Um, and, and for me, I just... Uh, I was exactly, and and so were they. Where they were, we were exactly where we were supposed to be. Right. Um, and and uh, time will tell if we'll get back together. If we yeah. don't, it just, well, that's we're, the thing we're is doing that well. when you get separated like that, all of a sudden, if you do get back together, <laughs> it means something again. Oh well, you know, and, and the thing is too, is that it's not just me that's been separated from your friends that they maybe have grown up with or been in the business with a long time. It's 
have to roster. Yeah. Uh, so when WrestleMania or these the, the four shows a year, when we finally come together, it's amazing. Like you're yeah. just everybody's like, oh my god, you know, we I feel like I haven't seen you forever. You know, it's right. such a great time, uh, and so uh, it, it's so much fun. To, you know, WrestleMania this year is going to be amazing just because we literally haven't seen each other uh, since at least the Rumble for the past three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and the thing is, is that the Rumble, too, is so crazy because, I mean, it's one day, right, that you're catching up, but it's the Rumble. It's so busy and so much yeah. going on that it's like, oh, it's great to see you. I got, I got to go. Oh, yeah. But, but, you know, the great thing about you now you're getting excited. Uh, the great thing about <laughs> WrestleMania is we have the whole week. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You get the whole week. Now you're really catching up and it just makes it a, a, a really fun event. Yes, yes, and um, that's why, I, heck, I know everybody's excited for WrestleMania. You know, that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about WrestleMania. It's because I, I get to see and spend time with all the guys that I haven't been able to on Raw. You know, I get to see these yeah. guys. It's, it's going to be fun. I'm in the same boat because uh, I get to go to Mania, and I'm very excited to, to hang out with all you guys, especially because I'm not on the road anymore, and I miss you guys so much. So, yeah, it's just, it becomes um, a family reunion because this is definitely... <laughs> Been, it, uh, one thing with me being in WWE for so long, I mean, it's definitely become a family for you. You know, we talked about this before. I asked you, I remember, uh, I think I was in the ring for rehearsal or something. And I looked at you and I said, dude, why did you wait so long to come to WWE? And were you scared or did you think it was going to be? Hey, like, what did you think? Finally, when you got here to WWE, did you go, whoa, what? This is so different than what I thought it was going to be. Oh, 100%. You know how many stories have been told about WWE and, and guys that have worked there before. And I was so hard. There's, you're walking on eggshells. And and I was like, this isn't it, it all the way they explained it to me. Like, I, look, why does – I don't understand why, no, you know, no, everybody isn't here. Like, this is the place to be. This is – you know, and uh, and I joked around about catering, like this is great catering, you know, because it I didn't really have that. Great you food, know? amazing food, yes. Yeah, so it's like the little things that uh, you may have not uh, like for guys who've never been anywhere else. Like, man, you just don't know how good you got it, and and to hear all the change that's happening, and and um, while Vince McMahon is you know the man in charge, and I used to think he was very very intimidating. Now I just like, hey. Good to see you, man. He, you know, he's like it's easy to talk to. <clears throat> and in fact, he wants that. He yeah. wants that relationship. And I feel bad about bugging him to talk to him because he's so busy with everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, but he, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's told me like I don't don't hesitate. Come in here, talk to me if you need me. Let's talk. You know, um, so and but there's also guys there that I, I can go to as, as well. Like it's not hard to communicate there. Which mm -hmm. is huge. I know who's in charge. I can tell you that. Right. But if I but if I can't find that guy, I know I can go to someone else who will make sure that it gets taken care of. Like that doesn't happen everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been pretty exciting then, because uh, you've you've seen it so different that you're. Do you see? I personally look at it and I go, Oh my gosh! I'm actually glad that you turned down that developmental deal in 2002. You went to TNA. You did all of this growing, all of this. And then you came, for me, it was a bigger impact, I feel. It was, it was, everything happened the way that it was supposed to. Yeah. It was, it wouldn't have worked when, uh, when I left TNA, I had to go to Japan first. Mm -hmm. If I would have came to WWE, it wouldn't have worked the way that it should have. There, there were a lot of factors that came into the reason. I don't know why it, 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 they decided to hire me if it was because, oh, well, he's kind of making a name for himself. Uh, not only did he do it to TNA, but it's really big, you know. We really started doing well in Japan, and that's why we want him. Or they go, we got everybody's hurt right now. We need somebody else to come in. I don't know if that's the reason why I got hired, but there were certain things that happened. Yeah. And yeah. it put me in the, the perfect place to come out and really shine in WWE um, and, and gave me some great opponents to do it with. You may never know, but it's okay <laughs> because the end result is the end result. Yeah, and you are, I don't have to know. I just I I do know. Yeah, it was the timing was perfect. Right now, you're the one that brought up uh, that you were. Are you said you did turn forty? Or are you going to turn forty? I'm gonna turn forty. Hey, don't be in embarrassed. June. Hey, let me ask you something. This is the way I feel about age. If you died tomorrow, would they say how young or how old you are? 
Oh, they probably see how young I was, right? Exactly. So I didn't if think you're, about that. If you're considered young dead, you're more than young alive, baby. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so for, for you, though, but, you know, you put your body on the line every single time. And, man, when you go out there to have a match, you have a match. And you're doing high-flying things and this and that, and it's all over the place. How does your body feel at this point? Well, I, I have to do certain things now to make sure that it's, you know, stays the where I can actually do that stuff where I can still switch to that gear, um, which, you know, when, on my rides uh, from one town to the next, I'm going to ice on my way. Yeah. Uh, little things like that, that I didn't have to do when I was younger, but this is just part of growing up. This is yeah. older and, and some things that, you know, I've had to change my workouts. Like I can't do all that heavy weight that I used to when I was younger. In fact, I don't need to. I just need to maintain what I got. Right. I'll be all right. Right. Which is which isn't always easy because it's it's funny to me. I don't know why God would put this on us, but the older you get, the the harder it is to to work out, and the you know, and the less energy to have. But you've got to work out harder as you get older to maintain what you got. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's like ah, it's so much harder. Well, but, you it, um, it does make you appreciate. That's for sure, it, right? It it does, but uh, you know, you you can't. You, the only way you're going to get that knowledge is by getting older, right? You know, and 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 that's, you know, as a kid, you get told me a million times, like this is the way it's done, but it, it really appreciate it when you get older and understand it. I think yeah, you got all this this useless energy uh, when you're 25, and, and you know, like. Nothing uh, can slow you down, but right. then you realize as you get older, you need to slow down. Not because uh, it, it, you have to, but because it makes things better mm -hmm. physically and entertainment wise. It's better if you'll just slow down a little bit because there's so much that has to be digested uh, <laughs> in your body and in what, what you do in the ring, yeah. you know, that so people can respond to it and your body can't. Isn't that what they always say, though, too? You learn how to work out smarter, not harder. That's it. Yeah, it's smarter, not harder. So for you, okay, so if you headline WrestleMania, how do you, do you set your goals based on, oh, my gosh, that's what I want to do. I want to headline WrestleMania. Or do you set them, are there different kind of goals? And if you do headline WrestleMania, then what? Well, I, I have goals for everything. Um I would assume much like anybody who's been successful uh, and these goals started out small and then I got ridiculous goals that no one, you know, Can you share? myself could see me obtaining. But can you uh, share it, like what, what's, go, what's one of your ridiculous goals? I would love to hear it. Um, I got to find a way. I like my thing is finding a way to go at it, get it outside of the box, like uh, like eating lunch with uh, President Trump. Like, you know, like, it's like, that's a pretty, you know, it may be a feasible goal, but, you know, with WWE, maybe, you know, so, yeah. but the, to me, that's a, that's probably something that's never going to happen, but I'd like to. Hey, don't to say do that. that. Don't ever say that. Cause that right there, it well, stops it. Keep the energy open. Keep the energy open. Yeah. You never know. If you were in a room with him, what is it that you want to talk to him about? I would little things like that. We talked about before with, uh. Uh, you know, as you get older, as you know, probably, and, and for me, when you have kids, like um, politics come into play because I worry about this country because my kids live in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so therefore, stuff like uh, I want to know why when people pay into the system, why they don't get what they need to out of it when it when it happened to my uh, mother and father, the fact that they had jobs, they couldn't get any help from the government when they obviously needed it. Yeah. Uh, little things like that is what I would talk to him about because I don't think people who've never been in that situation have uh, really understand it. Um, it does happen. And, you know, uh, that would be little things like that's what I would talk to him about. Yeah. So that, that he know the situation that I come from and that people take advantage of the system when they shouldn't. Like, I think we should work for everything. I, I always say that. I hate when people say you deserve it. Oh, I hate that word. I, I just, really? I Why? Because I, I want them to say you earned it. Oh. I, like, you earned it. But I, I think if it's I a way it, to say you earned it. But you deserve it because you earned it. If they say that, then that's different. But like, I think that's understood. I always feel like you just, you just when they, sometimes when they chant, you deserve it. Like, no, I don't. Because there's other guys who've just fought just as hard to get to this point. Uh, 
I'll, I'll let you know when I earn it. Okay. Like I want, if I earn something, they never can say I didn't work for it. So for Mania, <clears throat> you want to hear the crowd saying, you have earned it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, we are going to let that out right now. People watching this, make sure at Mania that you guys yell that out. You have earned uh, yeah. it. I love there it. Let's go. see if we can make that happen. Start trending it. The hashtag, you have earned it. Everybody thinks they deserve something in this world, and we don't deserve anything. Well, yeah, so the entitlements is insane. It drives me crazy. I absolutely agree with you. Everything needs to be worked. Everything, you know, you gotta, you definitely have to work hard. Nobody deserves anything, it's, really. And it's not fun working hard. I don't like going to the gym. Yeah, most people think I may. I don't like going to the gym. Right. I have to. Right. I have to. I have to. It's my part of my job. Yeah. With your kids and you being on the road so much, do you feel like you're missing out on their lives? Does that bother you? I, I, I sometimes do, uh, and but I, I just I figure if I work hard now, I'll get to see so much more um, later. Like I, I'm gonna hopefully get to see a baseball game this Friday. All right. Um, so, but I probably won't get to see my oldest son play until he goes to the World Series down in Florida mm. uh, in late June. So. There's little things like that going on, uh, but hopefully in a couple of years, I'll be able to see him playing uh, uh, at state in, in baseball or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Who knows where I get to see him play, but if I work hard now, maybe I'll get to see more stuff. So do you want to, do you see yourself, you say a couple of years, do you see yourself just wrestling a few more years and that's it? Oh, and your little girl wants you right now. So bad. Annie. Oh, this is great. Go for it. Hold on one sec. No problem. Hey. Hey! I'm holding her out. What's the problem? She wants to see me. I'm getting into the Aw, this is so adorable. It's sad but cute. I love how the dog has been in the background this entire time. I am loving this. You see? This, oh my gosh, she's precious! Hi, Can sweetheart. Hi. Me? I've been interviewing your father. He is a rock star. Amazing, amazing guy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're almost okay. done here. Okay, I'll, I'll get you in a minute, okay? No more crying. Okay? Go Bye. Home. Oh, my gosh. She's so cute. <laughs> no, that is precious. She can be in the background this entire time. Oh my God. <laughs> she, she's like looking like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> she's like, who the heck is that? That's so adorable. So I, I see oh. it. So do you think a couple years then? I, I'm thinking a couple years. I, and I'm going to go until I can't switch that gear. Yeah. Because that's going to bother me if I can't do that. Uh, I want to be the AJ Styles that people expect. And when I can't be that guy, then it's time for me to leave. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to end it with this. Uh, in that Kurt Angle, when we were, when he was on here, had said, I asked him who he wanted to compete for his final match, if he ever was going to have a final match. And he mentioned it was definitely you. I would love to wrestle Kurt again. I would love to get in the ring with him and tear it up because I know that we could. That uh, would be fun. Yeah, I think that that would be amazing. I think the fans would absolutely love it. I could see that totally in the making. How do you feel that he's going in the Hall of Fame? I love it. I, and, and even when Vince was in TNA, or excuse me, when, even when Kurt was in uh, TNA, he always talked about um, WWE. Yeah. And so I know how much this means to him. Yeah. To be in the Hall of Fame. It's a, it's a big deal to him. Um, I'm super happy for him. Can't wait to see him. Um, and I just think, I think a lot of him, him and I have had so many great matches and, and shared so many moments. This is uh, going to be a really cool one for him. Yeah, I know. It's going to be great to be in the audience for that one, for sure. Yeah. Well, AJ, I thank you so much. I am so excited for you because, again, you are on uh, such an amazing journey in your life. I thank you for sharing your whole story. Um, but more than anything, it's like, you have this thing about you, your soul, that people are connect to you. I connected with you instantly, and that's more valuable than anything else, and I appreciate that about you and uh, and how much you're sharing with the world. Oh, you know what? Uh, I, 
I love being around people. I love, uh, obviously, that moment that you and I uh, shared. Oh, I remember uh, that. After Mania, when, I'll never forget. Yeah, uh, Monday after Mania. It was, it was, it was huge. Uh, just that getting that hug from you, and you, I, like, I kind of sensed that you, like, you felt what I was feeling. Yeah. And he's like, this guy needs a hug. Yeah. <laughs> like that was that was cool to me, and I'll never forget that. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. So thank you so much. Good luck in Mania. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care. Well, there you have it. AJ Styles, another incredible interview. Wow. Can you see how incredible, like, not only an athlete this guy is, we all know that, but the person in here uh, is so special. And I just really want to thank AJ for sharing such a vulnerable story, really. Uh, when you share your story about your entire life, uh, it can be such an open book, but it, it helps us, I feel, um, in dealing with our own things. And the fact that he's dealing with so much with his family, four kids, his wife, all of that, while he's going on, on the road and entertaining us. And make sure, guys, remember that uh, definitely start chanting, you have earned it for AJ Styles. All right, that is another edition of Making Their Way to the Ring. Thank you so much for joining us. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Lillian Garcia and also LillianGarcia.com. And for my Facebook page, just go to Lillian Garcia official fan page. Make sure that you subscribe on iTunes and uh, you can check us out if you wanna see the actual video. You can see his dog like, parading through the background <laughs> the entire time. It was so cute. His little girl came in, too. It was adorable. So uh, you can check that out at youtube.com slash TV. Thank you so much, guys. Peace, love, and much passion. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, Kevin Undergaro, Lillian Garcia, Mark Donica, associate producer James Frank, After Buzz Wrestling News correspondent Christy Olson, and the entire Making Their Way to the Ring staff. We would like to thank you for tuning in. Like us on Facebook, rate and comment on iTunes and YouTube. Follow Lillian on Twitter and Instagram at Lillian Garcia. This has been a presentation of the AfterBuzz TV Network. Buzz you later.